The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Can you help me out? Welcome into a Wednesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. They got a great sales department, great service department, and a great finance department uh, department. Equal uh, add it all up, I should say. Not doing a very good job with this. Add it all up, and that equals a fantastic car dealership. So before you put pen to paper and sign the next four to seven years of your life away with car payments, you owe it to yourself to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Uh, with you till 3 o'clock, at which time it'll be power hour. Don't forget, today is opening day at East Woodfield. And I, I understand the weather is going to be somewhat miserable uh, for a few hours this afternoon, and it's going to rain. And uh, listen, this isn't, you know, this isn't a, um, a setting where we're just going to immediately cancel the game because you don't have a tarp. Uh, there's a tarp at Eastwood Field, and that tarp is down. And they're anticipating the showers and thunderstorms, and they're anticipating all of the miserable weather that we're going to get as the frontal system moves past the area, as I put on my amateur meteorologist uh, gear. We're going to play baseball. Uh, it, and hopefully it will start at 7.05. Hopefully it does. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll be slightly delayed. But believe me when I tell you, we're going to play baseball tonight. Uh, the weather after about 6 o'clock tonight, actually not bad. It's going to wind up being a pretty nice night for baseball. Uh, it, it will be chilly uh, starting tomorrow uh, in, in tomorrow night when the, uh, when the scrappers take on the spikes, the state college spikes in the final game of the two-game series. It will be chilly tomorrow night, so uh, you certainly want to put on some uh, some long pants because it'll be a little chilly. Uh, but tonight, uh, rest assured, we will be playing baseball tonight. Uh, 6.50 airtime uh, to go and listen to the Scrappers game tonight with yours truly behind the microphone. Go to ysnlive.com slash scrappers ysnlive.com slash scrappers. So spelling it out, Y-S-N-L-I-V-E dot C-O-M slash S-C-R-A-P-P-E-R-S. ysnlive.com slash scrappers. Okay, uh, we can scrap, no pun intended, the Division Three Regional Tournament from Youngstown State University. Uh, they have already canceled uh, the D3 regional tournaments uh, that was supposed to be played this afternoon. Ursland was to play Sheffield Brookside at 2. South Range was to play Maslin Tusla at 5. Uh, those games have been postponed, and they will be played tomorrow. Don't be a bit surprised if everything gets moved to tomorrow, although I will say that the regional semifinals uh, for softball in Division Two, they've moved the West Branch Richfield Revere game to eight o'clock tonight. West Branch Richfield Revere at the Akron Firestone Stadium. That's where the softball state tournaments are going to be played. 
Uh, that game has been moved. It was originally set for 5 o'clock today. It has been moved to 8 o'clock tonight. So pretty good chance because they do have a tarp in Akron. There is a pretty good chance that West Branch and, Whit- and uh, Richfield Revere will be able to play a regional semifinal game. Uh, but they've moved that game from 5 in the afternoon to 8 in the evening. Keep in mind, uh, Firestone Stadium in Akron does have lights. So uh, that game has been moved to 8 o'clock. Pretty good chance they'll get that one in. As far as the other games that are set for today, district finals at Scene Park, uh, Division 2 starting at 5 o'clock, Canfield against Canton South. Uh, Division three uh, district finals at Scene Park, Cardinal Mooney and Burton Berkshire at seven thirty. It's going to be hit and miss. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get those games in. Uh, much like the uh, the game scheduled for today, the district championship game, Division two at Louisville, Salem is to play Chardon at five o'clock. Unsure whether that game is going to be played. Again, it's it's just going to depend on how fast the frontal system gets past us and how much water uh, is accumulated. Uh, the Division Three District Championship uh, at Niles between Rootstown and South Range up in the air. Uh, it obviously, if if it rains really really hard, and and I know that um, I know that. Uh, scene park has a tarp whether or not they can put it down uh, it remains to be seen uh, I don't know if Louisville has a tarp I don't know if Niles has a tarp uh, pretty good chance that these games might get moved to tomorrow which isn't that big of a deal uh, you would be doubling up with uh, division four uh, because uh, the D4 district uh, championship games will be played. Uh, Kennedy will be taking on Heartland at, at 5 o'clock up at Scene Park. Western Reserve will be taking on Matthews. Uh, that game will be played at Fairport Harding, uh, Fairport Harbor, excuse me, and that'll be at 5 o'clock as well. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow. Should not have a problem getting those games in tomorrow. So uh, today, hit and miss. We'll see what uh, what transpires. But as far as the uh, baseball from yesterday, Austin Town Fitch was eliminated. Uh, I'll tell you what, Maslin is a really good baseball team. Uh, they go to twenty one and four on the campaign as they uh, they jumped on Fitch for two runs in the bottom half of inning number one. Austin Town Fitch tied the ball game at two in the top of the second, and then it was all Maslin from there. Uh, they, they they cranked out five runs in the bottom of the second inning, and they had a 7-2 to two lead, and they just didn't look back. Uh, they wind up beating Austin Town Fitch by the final score of 12-3. to three. So Maslin goes to 21 wins and four losses on the campaign. Austin Town Fitch uh, ends their season uh, falling in the Division One District semifinals. A solid year for Austin Town Fitch, nonetheless. Uh, unfortunately, they they fall to the Maslin uh, Tigers, twelve to three. Uh, Division Four. My goodness, we had some fun uh, up at Fairport Harbor and uh, over at at Scene Park as well. Uh, first, let's go to Fairport Harbor. Western Reserve and Jackson Milton. And on paper, you look at this, and Jackson Milton is the top seed, and you would think, okay, Jackson Milton, they're the favorite. Uh, Look, one of the things that I was really hesitating about with this game, if anyone knows the past history of these two programs, they met at one point in three consecutive district championship games. And in three consecutive district championship games, Western Reserve knocked off Jackson Milton. Uh, they, they had their number. And yesterday, uh, they had their number. Uh, each team scored a run in the first inning. 
Western Reserve countered with three in the top of the second, two more in the top of the fifth inning. They had a 6-1 to one lead. Jackson Milton put up two in the bottom of the sixth, but that was as close as they could get. Uh, Western Reserve is in the district championship game. Jake Papagallo, nine punch outs, one walk. He gets the victory. Uh, he also picked up two hits in the contest, two of the 11 hits by Western Reserve. Papagallo with a base hit as well as a two-base hit. Uh, Seth Phillips homering and driving in two runs for Western Reserve. They go to 15-9 and nine on the campaign, and up next for the Blue Devils will be the Matthews Mustangs. Alex Nicholson was nothing short of spectacular yesterday. Threw a one-hit shutout, did not have a complete game. I, I beg your pardon, he did have a complete game. Uh, it was a five to nothing one hit shutout. Uh, Nicholson uh, said, "You want me on the mound? You need me on the mound." Yeah, okay, a little, little few good men reference there. Uh, Twelve punch outs, three walks, gets the victory. Uh, these two teams will play tomorrow, and tomorrow might be really, really busy, given the fact that we're uh, going to have some impending, really horrible weather. Uh, and as we uh, say that, we bring in uh, the CEO and the and the uh, the BFF of the of the group, uh, Mr. DJ Oakley. Uh, we got cancellations. I take it. We have cancellations. Uh, already moved to Thursday is the uh, D three championship game at Niles, Rootstown, and South Range. That game will be played Thursday, same time, uh, same bat, ta- bat time, same bat channel at 5 p.m. at Niles. Um, the YSU regional softball games have been moved to Thursday, same time, same place. Ursuline and Brookside and South Range and Tuslaw, uh, 2 and 5 respectively. So, so far, that is all we have, but we're expecting a little bit more. The only one that I'm, I'm really – well, also – Heads up on this one. Uh, West Branch and Revere has been changed yeah, to Yeah, they moved PM. it to 8. And, th- and they'll play that game because they have a tarp at Firestone Stadium. Right. They'll play that game. I fully anticipate, unless weather breaks out, that Salem and Chardon will happen at Louisville because that is an all-turf infield. There is no dirt to speak of. The okay. only concern would be the outfield, which is still natural grass. So okay. I think we'll get that one in. Fingers crossed. Um so far, so good at Scene Park. They, you know, we talked to them yesterday. They said the latest that they're going to call that game is two two thirty, um, because of Canton South and how far they have to travel. Um, so we're still on for five p.m. and seven thirty p.m. Um, at Scene Park. Now so. they have a tarp at Scene. It's it's rolled up down the left field line in the main field, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. There there is a tarp there. I just know the ones that they cover the the home plate with and they cover uh the, the mound with that's the okay. only one i'm aware of okay and, and they were on last night when we left okay because that because i swear i've seen a rolled up tarp down the left field line that would be big enough to to put the in the only problem is they don't have enough bodies over there to put that monstrosity Correct. on the field because uh, you know speaking from experience it takes about 12 to 15 people to put that thing on. Yeah, it takes a, a, a baseball team and a half, essentially. Yeah, you know? it's it's a yeoman's work to uh, to put one of those bad boys on. I still see my psychiatrist because of that stuff. Your psychiatrist or oh, your yeah. chiropractor? Uh, well, th- both. <laughs> both. Uh, you, you ever try pulling a wet, uh, filled with water tarp? Yes. No fun. It's part of being the college uh, baseball experience. No fun. Um, also, want to let you know, if the games are axed, tonight at scene park the plan in place as i understand it is we will have three games going on at the same time on thursday division two division three division four on one two and three yeah so there will not be a a a main event so to speak of greg goulas is is adamant that he wants to get these games in just in case there's weather later on in the night you know a lot of the and even if you look at some of the uh some of the, 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 I don't even know what you call them, the, the meteorologist forecasts, they don't know what's, what's going to happen right now. There's so many different ones that are going on. Um, we were supposed to already have rain and be pounded with rain right now, and, and it's sunshine. Yeah, and I'm looking at the, uh, uh, I'm looking at a weather app, and I did the hour by hour up in Niles. There, first of all, there's going to be baseball played at Niles, whether it's a delay or not. 
who knows? But the tarp is already on the field, and they'll get they'll get that game in. But I'm looking at the uh, you're talking about at Eastwood, field, yeah, at not Eastwood. just Niles at Eastwood. Yeah, because yeah, the they'll, Niles they'll, game's already been canceled. They canceled yeah. that at nine o'clock this morning. Yeah, they'll they'll get that game in. Uh, the crap that we're that you're going to see is west of Cleveland right now. So it's kind uh, of- so it's a it's a slow moving. Uh, frontal system, unfortunately, and it's not going to get into our area till about 2:45, and it'll leave our area at approximately five o'clock, which is game time. Yeah, for and and, high and and it'll it'll rain. It's it's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be a gully washer, but it'll rain. Uh, so gully washer. Oh yeah, well, it's, it's the old country term. Would that pass in, in Scrabble? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably <laughs> not. So, uh, but it, yeah, it's hit and miss. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they can get the games in at scene. And, and in a perfect <laughs> world, look, I mean, you don't want the field or you don't want uh, that to be the determining factor as to who wins a game and who loses a game, especially in a championship setting. Yeah, exactly. And you certainly don't want anyone uh, busting uh, busting it down the first base line and then they round first base, hit a mud spot take their knee out and and he's done for the rest of the year i mean that just you, you don't want that so you, you want a clean field you want a you want a perfect facility and you know if, if the rain comes and 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 it does damage all right you play it tomorrow that's that's the reason why bob seen park has three ballparks and they're all good well that's the thing is it, the remaining ballparks all have pretty good water retention you know yeah. what i mean they they they're all pretty much um, taking care. I mean, you got one that's on all turf. You got one uh, scene park, which is, you know, as good as it comes in high school baseball, um, in, in semi-pro baseball. And then, of course, you have yours, which is at Eastwood, which is a professional graded field. So yeah. we should. I mean, if we're not playing at those field, three fields tonight, we're not playing anywhere. That's as far as I, I mean, to me, that's that's a, a valid statement. Yeah, I, I just I, I think that we'll uh, we'll be cautioned uh, and hopefully tournament director and i know greg goulas uh has been doing it for years uh he he's forgotten more about the high school baseball and how to do tournaments than yeah. we'll ever know uh he'll 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 make the right call he yeah. always does yeah so i w- <laughs> i wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't anticipate anything until two three um at the earliest from scene park um lewisville's a different story i mean you got chardon that's got to make the trip to, to lewisville salem that's a 30 minute drive so that's that's not a problem um, but we'll be on the horn with, uh, no pun intended, Terry Horn uh, over at Louisville and, and try and, and get, get you updated. But all the updates will probably be, I, w- I would assume they'd all be on your show. So if you see me popping in, there's going to be some cancellations. We're going to be busy on Thursday if, if the weather holds us up. I mean, we're, we're going to be swamped on Thursday with a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's good. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the way you want it. I mean, nobody ever wants the rain from, from a, a play ball standpoint, but it's part of baseball. You yeah. Know? And, and anyone that goes over to Scene Park, assuming everything gets canceled, I mean, you pick your smorgasbord. You got Division Two District Championship on Field One, Division Three on Field Two, Division Four on Field Three, and they're all going to be solid games. I, mean, I wish Heartland Christian and JFK they they didn't pitch their aces. No. So you got the two aces going up against each other. Man, that is going to be a really, really good game. Yeah, Caleb versus Cam, and there's a lot of people that – I mean, Mark was one of the ones that was really riding me hard last night about, well, this is why you don't pitch your ace in a situation like this. And I said, well, you got to get there. I mean, there's, there's – got to get there. I mean, the, the advantage for Heartland last night, and, it, and it's a distinct advantage, is they played three times this season, including last night with Southern. Yep. So you know what you have with them. You know if you can possibly get by with a two or a three or – whoever you have in your bullpen, um, you know, but you also know that if you get in trouble, the, the ace is going on the mound to shut it down. Like, you got to get there still. And that's, it's the age old, I mean, you and I have talked about this numerous times. You pitch your one or you pitch your two. You got to get there, but you also got to win it when you're there. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not etched in stone that you pitch your ace in the semifinals. Uh, and Heartland had no disrespect to Southern. Heartland had a break. Southern was uh, slightly above 500. More importantly, Heartland saw this team two times. They played this team twice. They know this team, and their coach was pretty comfortable and and confident that his two 
could beat Southern. Now, Mission the, accomplished. The and, only thing, Ron, that was weird last night because the way the bracket was set up was Southern was the home team. It was weird. I don't know how Southern could have been the home because team. Because they came from a different, the top of the bracket maybe, or, or the, the bottom, whichever way it was set up, Southern came from there, and that's how it was. I, I, Talking to Greg, he said that they go by the bracket. They don't go by oh, the record. Wow. They don't go, they don't by, go the by the seeding. seeds. Nope, they go by the bracket. That is weird. Yeah, so Southern was actually the home team last okay. night, which was really interesting. Who's going to be the home team between JFK and Southern, or JFK and Heartland then? And by the way, JFK did the same thing. JFK recognized that Lisbon, like Southern, a team that you know, a little above a little above five hundred, and, and JFK said, "Hey, you know what? We could probably beat this team with our number two mission accomplished." So, well, Jaden Richel's a stud. Oh, of course. And, and yeah. like, they're in a good spot where they can pitch Jaden Richel in a, a, a semifinal game the rest of the way and, and leave Cam just riding on those championship games. And they, they've got another pitcher, too, that's a hard thrower. I mean, they, they've got some good talent at JFK. They're very young. Cam Hollibaugh is the only senior on that team. I know. That, that's a that's a loaded team. And, and then you get the two the two teams that are going to be playing in Fairport, uh, Fairport Harbor. And, by the way, I had a friend of mine that went up there, and he was not impressed with that field. Uh, it's woof. That's what I heard. Yeah, I, I heard a lot of bad things about the field. I, I mean – Hopefully, in the future, someone can uh, pick another site. It's a long uh, ride from it, here, and, and it, it, it's it's a pretty long ride for Western Reserve and Matthews to be playing a district championship. It's seventy two minutes away from South Range, yeah. is what we 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 kind of mapped it at. So you look at Western Reserve, probably a little bit further. Yeah, about eighty minutes. Yeah, I mean that's that's a long ride to play on a field that's not as we call pro grade i'm not i don't want to knock them yeah. but but at the same time like it, i think the ohsa needs to do some more due diligence on where they're playing these games yeah i think that it would probably serve them best if they picked another site for for that district tournament uh but matthews and western reserve they had to go with their they, they had to go with their aces look st thomas aquinas plays an outrageously difficult schedule so their record a little misleading and Nicholson throws a one-hit shutout, and then you got Western Reserve going up against the top seed Jackson Milton, who only lost three games all year long. There's no way their number two would have beaten Jackson Milton last night. They had to go with Papa Gallo. I saw St. Thomas Aquinas earlier this season, and they didn't impress me. They, 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 and maybe it was just a bad game, but they were in the, the Louisville tournament, and they, it was rough. It was rough to watch. I mean, you talk about the pace of, of play. Um, it was they were giving away outs left and right, and you know it's 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 going to be interesting. It's going to be real interesting because we've you've got a Western Reserve team that really really believes in themselves right now, knocking off their their arch rival. Like I heard you talking about these games. They've they've owned them for years. I, it didn't surprise me when I heard they beat them. Throw the records right out the window. Yeah, exactly. And and, and, the, and that's what people don't understand. The seedings don't matter at this point. It's a one game playoff. Exactly. And you're the ride in a hot hand, or or you get hot in the middle of a game, and and or let's say, I mean, let's just face it, errors cost you ball games. Yeah. At this level, errors will cost you a chance at a state championship. And if there's a lot on the line, if your team is expected to do an awful lot of good things and you're in a tight ball game, the character is going to show up, the character factor. How tight is a team going to be if you're the heavy favorite to win a, uh, a, a lot of tournaments, district, regional, and even state, and you're in a tight ball game and a ball's hit to someone, you know, everyone's got to be on point defensively. This is, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love but I absolutely hate single elimination uh, baseball games because you you get the hottest team you don't necessarily get the best team but you get the hottest team uh, to to win games and you know credit to Western Reserve and and uh, and they they're hot right now they I saw them earlier in the year they looked awful uh, and they I saw them later in the year and they oh boy did they look good well I'll tell you what Jake Zatchok is a good friend of mine we went to college together he was a great pitcher he's a Western Reserve product there's a lot of pride in that program and and Jake is is a guy that he's very by the numbers he's very like we talk about gut instinct he's a guy that 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 plays the numbers a lot and Jake has done a good job of rallying this team around leadership around it's us against the world and it showed last night 
Well, and Ed, Ed, Ed Anthony, the uh, Western Reserve head coach, I mean, he's no stranger to its success in the tournaments. This team was in Columbus two years in a row, uh, lost to Newark Catholic both years. Uh, he's, he's been there, done that. Uh, he's, he's not going to get he's – not, he's not going to get psyched out uh, playing a top seed in a tournament. This, this guy is one of the more successful baseball coaches in this area. Uh, and Western Reserve looking to get into the regional tournament. And they got a shot. They have a legitimate shot to beat Matthews uh, on Thursday. It'll, it'll, be a, uh, it'll be a fantastic game between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking, just making sure that I'm on the same page. Who'd you say that the Western Reserve coach was? Ed Anthony. You sure about that? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, Ed Anthony's been there forever. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's been there forever. He, he's he's probably in the last few years uh, he'll he'll probably uh, he'll probably leave it. But uh, no, he's been there forever in a day. Uh, he's, I uh, you know I, I umpired a couple of his games. He uh, <laughs> he didn't appreciate one or two of my calls. Go figure. <laughs> Were you ducking out of the way on those ones? No, 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 no. My uh, my twenty <clears throat> twenty vision was uh, was perfect that day. Twenty <clears throat> yeah, twenty <clears throat> twenty vision was uh, was perfect that day. We have uh, we have video that will come out at some point. Uh, well, listen, behind the plate against somebody that doesn't catch the ball uh, extremely well. That's uh, I was ducking, jiving, and uh, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, Maslin and Fitch. Uh, we made mention of this. Fitch lost yesterday, twelve to three. Uh, this Maslin team is. They've been a good program for a while, and uh, to take nothing away from Austin Town Fitch, uh, Maslin twenty-one and four, solid, solid program. We'll see what they can do against uh, the top seed, but uh, Fitch got nothing to be embarrassed about at all. This this is a fantastic season, and and I think that that Fitch is they're going to be back sooner. A lot sooner than what people think. There, there's that's a solid program. They're a young team, yeah. And you know they've. I would say that you know some of their best players are, and no disrespect to their seniors, but their best class right now is a junior class. You got Joe Roth, who's going to play. I'm just guessing D1 baseball somewhere, hopefully close to home. Um, outstanding catcher can pitch, it lights out, and then also uh, plays plays first base. Anytime you have a, a player like that that can maneuver around and you can. Hide him if you if you need to save his arm a little bit over at first or listen he can throw out anybody behind that dish so it's it, it, the, Fitch is a very good team this was not the year that they had necessarily circled on their calendar this is our year you know I think next year and the year after are going to be very telling about the Fitch baseball program and and for good reason you know they've worked a lot a lot we talked about Canfield yesterday Fitch is in the same boat these kids have played together for a long time. And it's their time to shine. Yeah, it's um, they followed in the footsteps of the football program, where Fitch made a reasonably deep run in football. Mm-hmm. And but we were all saying, okay, this really isn't. You know, this is the one year early type of a situation. Get a load of them next year; they're going to be really good. Uh, Two thousand and twenty-one could be a bang up year in Austin Town uh, with the Fitch uh, boys' athletics because the basketball program is going to get a whole lot better. Uh, and you know the football and baseball program are going to be just rock solid. This this could be a bang up year for Austin Town Fitch uh, this fall. Yeah, I mean you look at their schedule, who they're going to have to play. It's going to be a little bit more uh, ambitious. All right, bring it. You know, and, and I'm all for it. Yep. But T.J. Parker is is all on board for it. You know, people talking about that that schedule last year. Okay, well you got Fitch and you had everybody else. He's not backing down from saying that this is still going to be their year. You know, the what's that team up in Erie? The Erie the, Erie Cathedral Prep. Yeah, they're on the schedule. There you go. They're coming, and it's 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 going to be interesting. But this is this is that Fitch life. This is that Fitch life, and and they talk it and they walk it. So let's see let's see what happens. But this baseball program, they will play anybody anywhere. They can play you at Fitch Stadium. They'll play on six eighty. They'll play on eleven. Where <laughs> where you want to play, they don't care as long as the baseball is involved. Play in the phone booth. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we, Fitch, is, uh, their tournament is uh, over. Western Reserve will play Matthews in the D4 district championship game from uh, from uh, Fairport Harbor. Kennedy will play Heartland from Scene Park. 
Uh, it could be on field one. It could be on field three. It could be on field two. It just depends on uh, what today's action at Scene Park, uh, if they decide to uh, cancel both games, if they play both games, then obviously Kennedy and Hartland would be on field one. If they don't play both games and they cancel uh, everything at Scene, then Kennedy and Hartland would play on field three, and all three of those games would go on at the same time at 5 o'clock, uh, which, you know what? You like if, that. If someone went to Bob Scene Park, just a, just a casual fan, and you had an opportunity to see Canfield and Canton South on field one, Mooney and Burton Berkshire on field two, Kennedy and, and uh, Hartland on field three, sign me up. See, I, sign me up right now. I like now. it from a photographer standpoint, from what we do. It's fantastic because I hire one photographer. They go bang, 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 and That's they're it. done. Yep. From what – from a gate standpoint, I'd be interested to see what they thought at Seen Park because I know Canfield is going to bring a huge crowd. Mooney is going to bring their typical crowd at Seen Park. I'm wondering if they're going to be frustrated about not playing on field one, which they play on all year round. Um, and then as their home field, and then on three, that's a good game. And not to take anything away from field three, but it, it is separated, right? Oh, it is. It's, it but, is but it's a different parking lot, too. Yeah, so here's the other thing is you can't – I guess you can get over to three oh, yeah. from one. Yeah. But it'll be interesting because – I would steal a golf cart. They, <laughs> it's not that far, on. Well, I'm just saying. And your photogra- our photographer, I should say, should probably steal a golf cart and get to, get to field two and field three as they'll quickly be, as possible. They'll be and, okay. I, but, but, I mean, I just – from that standpoint, those, those are three championship games. And scene one to me has always been championship ground. It is because the, the, the stands are a, a lot bigger. Uh, the press box is a whole lot nicer. It, it it screams top shelf activity, but the other two fields are uh, they're, they're not they're as solid. Bad, but I would I would love to see a a four a six thirty seven and then you know at nine I, I really do at that point like because a, a baseball fan could just eat that up and from a concession stand standpoint oh yeah. Yeah. You're killing it because it, you're getting three games as a price to one. Opposed to one, not a price to one. I, I wonder if school is out for everyone. Because if that's the case, then sign me up for that. JFK graduated, and I know that. Yeah. But Heartland, I, but, I don't know. But I, I don't know if, the, you know, the kids have graduated, but I don't know if the K through 11 is out of school yet. Just yeah. because kids graduate doesn't mean the K through 11 Correct. kids are out. I, I don't know. Like, I, again, like, I, I think from a standpoint of the entertainment value, from our, our standpoint, I would love to see people with eyes on all three games. Yeah, because if, if, if school's out at Canfield, Canton South, Mooney, Burton Berkshire, Canton Kennedy, South is and, out. and Heartland. Canton South is out. Yeah, if, if school's out for all six of those schools, then sign me up for 3 o'clock Division Four. See, that's going to be tough because – Three o'clock, the parents have to be there too. No, I get it. And and look, I mean, call off work and oh, you know. Boy, I, mean, I, to you. I understand. It's Easy. you know, it, it's it's easier said than done. Easy for us to do, right? Because exactly. that's our job. Because like, it's our job, going. exactly. But I mean, if you do it at five, and then you do it at seven thirty, and then you do it at nine, then people are going to be like, what, "What the hell?" The nine o'clock game, everyone's going to be like, "Oh, come on, this is ridiculous." It's going to move it back ever so slightly. If, if I had to guess, if like. If I had to propose something, it would be, and I know Greg wants to get these four, over with. Four, five, thirty, and seven. I would four, say, I would say, if they got whacked today, I would move everybody back a day, and I would go same thing, five and seven thirty, and then let let the Friday main event be the D four championship. They're not going to do it, but I would love to see that because that's a Friday game, and I would probably push that to six o'clock, and then you get people from everywhere because that would be the only championship that I know of in town. Yeah, because there's no there is no baseball championship on Friday. No, why? Well, I know that the OHSA wants things during the beginning portion of the week because then you can you have rest. I don't know if this is the reason, but I you look at the schedule and you go, okay, so you can pitch your ace in that game two yeah, and then rest and, them up and for and game rest one. Them for game one, of course, if if you're doing it that way, you can you can you can probably do that. But I I, I love Friday night championship baseball. Oh my gosh, that would be good. 
because everybody's going to show up. Well, and, and that's that's a thing. Like we've been locked in our houses long enough. Give us something to look forward to on a weekend. And all, all due respect, between these three games, if I had to rank the excitability, Kennedy and Hartland's number one, and it's not even close. Really? No disrespect to the other two pro, the other two games. Canfield will absolutely destroy Canton South. I, I don't, want, I don't want to hear that. I, I, I think it, it, it won't be, it, it won't be as fun as Kennedy and 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 uh, Hartland, or I, or as potentially exciting you may not see a run scored in seven innings if the if the two pitchers are on their a game you may not see a run scored in seven score innings. listen and no disrespect to cam hollaball because he's a heck of a pitcher and, a, and a, probably should be the the player of the year in baseball as well as he was in basketball and football but i will say this listen hartland put 17 runs on the board last night that's not that's not easy to do this time of year. No, it isn't. You're right, and and they uh, and, and they had an arsenal. And you um, should have seen them run the bases. Yeah. I mean, I've I have never seen a team run the bases so efficiently and effectively as Hartland did last night. And I'll be honest, they kept some of their powder dry. And I'm not just talking about Caleb Graff, the what Mark Franken refers to as the best kept secret in Columbiana County, which he is. I, I'm 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 interested to see what how much more offense these guys have because and, and I say that out of they had a lot more in the tank. You know, they, they let the foot off the pedal at seventeen runs, which is crazy to me. Okay. I, I And Southern a, isn't bad. It's a different animal. Cam Hollibaugh is a different I animal. I understand that. But um, the offense this time of year, it is hard to come by. And when you see a, anything over ten, you go, Whoa, that's why I look at no, JFK. I, absolutely. But JFK playing Lisbon, JFK's had Lisbon's number for years. Sure. It was, you know, even back when Lisbon had Logan Bell. And that was, that's not a... That's a great, great yeah, team. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not an easy thing to beat Lisbon JFK with Logan just, Bell. They just found a way to win. Yeah. And, and they, they, had, they had their arms all over that game last night from the jump. I mean, Hollaball went three for three with, with five RBIs. Mike Morrow went... Um, three for three with three RBIs. I mean, there were guys, again, JFK took the, the pedal off the metal a little bit too. And it was, it was, it was interesting to watch. And, and there was a couple people that said, this, this shouldn't be a district game. No, the it super shouldn't. districts are, are messing everything up because district games are supposed to be five to three, two to one, one to nothing. And I mean, you think about the one Chase Franken threw against Kent and Central Set, uh, Catholic a few yeah. years ago, one, nothing. Yeah. It was a gem, yep. and now we've got seventeen to three. You know, that's we, we're a long way from home, pal. No, I get it, but I'll I'll just re- say I'll reiterate what I said. If both starters are on their A game, you will not see a lot of runs scored. All right, so over under on that game run scored six. That's still high. Uh. I'll, I'll I'll arbitrarily say six. So you're saying I, what four to two or, or five to one? I, I'm I, I would I would publicly say six, and let's use that as an over under. But I'd go way under. I think this is a two to one. This is a this is a game that screams two to one. Okay, so three runs. If if both pitchers are on their A game, and that's the million dollar question. I would say if this game goes over three. This game stays three runs. I'll buy you a steak dinner. Okay. It's because three or under. Yeah, three okay. or under. All right. Anything over. Whatever. I, I don't care at that yeah, point. Yeah, I, I, I think this is this is if again that's the million dollar question. And Anthony and I had this conversation on Monday. The the hardest thing that anyone will ever try to to do, uh, it, which is damn near impossible, is get into the mind of a fifteen to eighteen year old kid. That's that's just, why high school sports is so unpredictable because none of us know what's in the mind of a fifteen to eighteen year old kid. I mean, for all we know, you know, the kid that's on the mound uh, may have broken up with his girlfriend that day, yeah. or uh, but thirty one runs yesterday, or something combined. crazy happened. No, I look all all due respect to the to the offense that that showed up. I mean, that was that was amazing, but. Uh, the the, uh, the two stars on this team, pitching wise, are pitching, and I'm a firm believer: good pitching always beats good hitting. 
And these two, if they're on their A game, you ain't going to get a lot of offense. All right, so three That's, runs is, is, is the bar. Yeah, I'm thinking a two-to-one game at, uh, of something of that nature. I think it's going to be a really, really tight game. Uh, Mooney and Berkshire is going to be a, uh, a tight game as well. I, Mooney's, Mooney's on a roll. Oh, my God. Well, that's offense versus defense. Uh, yeah. I mean, you look at that, and, and the thing about that is is you look at – you said Mooney scored, what, 13 runs, 12 runs, something like that? Uh, against Garfield. Against Garfield. Yeah. And then Berkshire won one to nothing. Yeah. And a sacrifice fly. Yeah. So it's going to be who's on or, or you know. Yeah. What, what was it billed as in, was it WrestleMania? It was the uh, immovable object meets the. Uh, Irresistible force. That's what it was. And yeah. that's what this is. Yeah. I mean, it's, does Berkshire have an ace? Or does it, do they have a two that's a lot like their ace? If they do, it's a low scoring game. If they don't. Mooney wins this game. Mooney can hit. Mooney, oh god! And Ethan they, yes. Shaw is getting red hot. Ian Francis, the 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 YSU yeah. future recruit. I mean, yeah, uh, it's that good luck. That team is uh, that team has got hot at the at the exact moment they should have gotten hot. And and then you got Canfield and Canton South. Canton South uh, it, it did something that I did not see coming. Uh, getting the victory over Howland, I I didn't see that one coming in a million years. Because Howland had an ace that just, if he's on his game, I I, I put in pencil or, or in pen, Canfield versus Howland. This is going to be great third time between these two teams. Howland gave them all they could want, and Canton South came up and bit him in the ass and said, Mm-mm, Which, out, I mean, we're going to take this that's spot. That's why I'm so surprised you wave off Canton South so quickly. Okay, I, it's did they expect? Did they expand all their energy knocking out Howland? Because you got another pretty immovable object in front of you in Canfield. And again, we've all been talking so much about Canfield. I, I feel like I'm jinxing this team, but they're that good. It's uh, But if Canton South is in a tight game with them... But listen, Canfield's on a mission. And oh, of Canfield, course they are. They, they've battled through adversity, and they're another team that looks at next year as being their year. So anything they get to this point is house money, you know? So mm-hmm. you look at this and you go, okay, you got the YSN coach of the year, Gary Niddle, yep. who is very deserving of, of that opportunity. Anyone that goes undefeated deserves to be coach of the year. At D2? Yes. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Because they've had the – you're first off, you're Canfield. And from the jump, they've had the target on their chest. Yep. Um and then you look at some of the teams that they've put aside that are still in the tournament, yep. and you go, huh, maybe they are the real deal. And, and, and we're not talking about one-run games. We're talking about they got mercied. Oh, yeah. No, this is, this is a team that can hit. This is a team that can field. This is a team that can pitch. Uh, this is a team that has great situational hitting. They're, there's not a lot of weaknesses on this team. Uh, you know, uh, God, I hope Salem beats Chardon and Canfield uh, and Salem can meet up in the regional semifinals and, and the Chagrin Falls team gets into the regionals as well. I Last coach's poll, Chagrin Falls number three. Canfield was number one. Yeah. So it's hard to believe the two of the top three teams according to – and I, don't, I, I put a lot more – I put a lot more uh, trust in a coach's poll than I do a – uh, one of our polls, well, uh, and, and not ours, but yeah. but people that work in our business. But Canfield has done it against the two. They've done it, I think, against the three as yep. well earlier this season. Hoban was one of them, and yep. they handled them easily. Yep. You know, it's I'm just... I'm most excited, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm most excited to see Petro versus Lane Rhodes in another game where you're not pulling these te- these players because of pitch count unless they're at 125. Yeah, that was early in the year. I think it was First game, game one. First and, game. And you're not going to throw a kid 125 pitches in game one. No. Uh, so, yeah. Petro, Petro shut down the offense of, of Salem, and Lane Rhodes did the same thing. The only thing was Mike DeBar pulled Lane because he was going to pitch him in the conference opener, which was two days later. Yep. It, it was on a Saturday. And he, they, they started their conference play on a Monday. And even even Gary Niddle and, and the coaching staff said, wow, Lane had a one-hitter going. Mm-hmm. He kept us off the base pass. So, I mean, that could be a game where it's interesting because where you start 
could be where you finish. One of those teams will finish on that if that's indeed the route. Yeah, and, and hopefully we get to see that. But uh, sometimes in life we don't get what we want, and, and Canton South and Chardon are going to have something to say about this. And uh, if they play today, great. If they if they play tomorrow, okay. But, um, you know, Canton South has a chance, but they're going to have to play the game of their life. Uh they played extremely well against Allen. They're going to have to do that and more to beat Canfield. But isn't that what you do? Like, if you're going to play Canfield, if you're going to play a team like that that's on the top, you have to play the game of your life. We've uh, seen absolutely. It. And I'm not taking away from Canfield, but Canfield knows that they're always going to get everybody's best punch. They've been doing it since that Salem. No, I, exactly. And, so and, it's, and, at and, some point, you wonder how many punches can you take before you finally go, oh, man, it's starting to hurt a little bit. Yeah, the million dollar question is: Does Canton South have a two that's a lot like an ace? And because that's the know. that's the absolute key uh, in making a, a long tournament run. I mean, look at the teams that we have left. Canfield has three guys anywhere else, practically anywhere else. They would be aces. I'm gonna guess no, and, and here's why: is because at EBC was it was a tough conference. Salem cruised through it. I mean, they went undefeated through it. Then yeah. you got West Branch, yeah. that Marlington, yep. you know, three good teams. And, and, and then again, let's not forget about Alliance. So Alliance. Yep. So, so you're talking maybe they're the fifth best team, Canton South. Yeah. If you have a, a, a 1A, you're probably throwing them one of those games, right? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you have a 1A, he's throwing in this district championship game tonight or tomorrow. I just don't think it's there. And I could be completely off. I don't – again – Full disclosure, I have not called a Canton South game this year. I don't know what they have. But you know, to, to have those four teams at the top of your conference and then Canton South, I mean, they played out of their minds against Howland. Yeah. So uh, can they do it again without their, their number one? I don't know. Because Canfield, the problem that, that most teams will have against Canfield is you have to go pitching lights out. Defensively, you have to be – immaculate and you got to be able to hit and at this level there's not a whole lot of teams that can do all three of those phases and and hang with the cardinals yeah it's you know uh, the further along we get into the tournament canfield will find a team that can do all three of those things it's it's not going to be easy it never is for a team to win a state championship uh and they're they'll find a team that is going to be really well coached uh, a really good offense, really good pitching, solid defense, and they'll they'll have a tight game. They'll they'll have a very tight game uh, in this tournament uh, trail. I don't know if it's going to be in the district championship game. I'm going to make a prediction. You ready? Mm-hmm. The team that if Canfield gets beat by, the team that beats them has one or less, so one or none errors on the board. Oh, I, I, I have to say zero. You commit an error against Canfield, and it comes back to bite you. Well, an, an, an error could be something as simple as you know a, a throw over to first base, and it gets away. It yeah. costs you a base runner. Yeah, but if you have two outs, it costs you a lot more because everything else is unearned from that point. Right, but at the same time, if you have two outs with an, I mean, errors happen at this level. There's pressure situations, so I'll, I'll, I would say that the team that beats Canfield, if Canfield is to be defeated in this tournament is one error or less. I'd be shocked, shocked with the speed, the athleticism of the Cardinals, that if, you know, you got Josh Giuliano hitting close to 600. I yeah, mean, he's, he, he had an unbelievable game. And he's got a, had an unbelievable year. Yeah. And he came out of nowhere. I mean, this kid is making a push for the Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, he's, he's like 160 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't hit for power. He'll tell no. you that. But... He chips away, he gets on base, and yeah. in this offense, that's all you need. So, I mean, you look at that, and you got to combat that, but you also, like, they're going to push you into situations where it's going to be a bunch of bang, bang plays at first base. If one gets away, and it's the same thing on Canfield, they're going to find somebody. You mentioned Sugar and Falls. They're going to find somebody that is going to push them to the limit, and if, if they make an error, it's going to cost them. And I, I, I seriously think that... The team that beats them, if they are to be defeated, will have one error or less. And they will probably have less than double-digit hits. Yeah. You know I what I mean? Along, I can go along with that. I, I don't th- think they get mercied. At I, this point. I think whoever wins that region wins the state championship. 
There's a lot of people that, that would probably feel the same way. Yeah, I, I think whoever wins that region's winning a state title. I, I, I can't believe that there is another region in the state of Ohio that comes remotely close to the region we're about to see, assuming Canfield, Chagrin Falls, and Salem all win. When did Canfield win the state championship? Was that 07? Oh, uh, I know that Koenig was the, uh, yeah. uh, was the coach. Uh, I was... I was I wasn't in the area, so it had to have been between 2000 and 2012. So I want to say it was 07. 07 or 08, somewhere I around say, there. So these kids, man, how old would they be when they went? They, they saw grade. it. Yeah, so they, they, were, they were part of that, that youth movement yeah. that Canfield had to, to watch a state championship come home and the parade and everything that ensued. So to them – it's not necessarily been there, done that, but it's they saw it happen and yeah. they, they've dreamt of this moment. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit more in it for Canfield. Not saying that there's not anything in it for anybody else in Sugar and Falls and Salem, but you know Salem. Listen, I, I've told people this for weeks. Salem is the team that has been under the radar the entire time and has heard the talk of Canfield, Canfield, Canfield. Oh, Canfield, and, and Canfield. there's a, there's a steam coming out of that town. I got text messages from Lane Rhodes last night, yeah. and he's talking to me about how he can't sleep. He's so amped up. He's ready to play. Like they made a they made a, a, a special video. The the, the 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 Quaker Crazies made a special video for it. Um, you know, he he looked at me dead in the eye, and, and if you know the intensity of Lane Rhodes, you know that when he looks at you and, and speaks in a certain way, he believes it with every bit of his heart. Yeah. And, and he said. They're going to see a Lane Rhodes that they've never seen on Wednesday. Well, get and I there. can't wait. Get there Wednesday today. Yeah, today yeah, get there. Yeah, it's, it's it, get the job done against Chardon, and then let's let's go to the regionals and. and oh, I don't think you got to. I listen. I don't think that anybody can. If they don't write anything about Canfield, if they don't write anything about about Salem. Salem doesn't need anything to get ready for Canfield. No, I don't think anybody is now. No, I mean, I, I, I think anyone that, that's that's going to be listening, well, listen, there's from a, outside of this area, is going to probably have have heard enough about Canfield to sit back and go, okay, we've heard enough. We don't want to deal with this crap anymore. But that's the funny we're ready thing. to we're ready to play this team. Anytime, I think it's anywhere. so funny because we cover so many teams here. That they read into these these articles and they're like, well, they, they cover Canfield every game and they have like, listen, we cover everybody. For the majority of it, we cover everybody's every game because game changers made it a lot easier for us to, oh, of to acquire the, the, the box scores and things of that nature. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There's people that were tired of us talking about Salem. There's people that, that are tired of us talking about South Range. You name a team that's still in it, they're tired of us talking about them. But this is the time of year people don't understand. This is the time of year where... We go from max coverage and spread and skeleton crews to everybody's focused on four or five teams across the board. Yeah, exactly. And now it's it's full coverage. Yeah. It's, it's full sprint. Years and years and years ago when it was just radio, uh, you would have you know a dozen, 15 teams go to the football playoffs, and you would pick a couple of teams, and then those teams would die off, and then you would pick an, another team. Hell, we would have meetings where we would sit back and go, who's got the best chance to win the state championship? We're, we're going to be on that horse, and we're going to ride that horse until mm-hmm. the horse crosses the finish line or doesn't go anywhere near the finish line, then we'll pick somebody else out. And it was just essentially rank the teams, uh, and, and we, we go uh, and we do that. The beautiful thing with YSN is we've been on all of our local teams on that board, on that wall, from the get-go, and the success that these teams have, uh, we're we're following them. Uh, and now we're down to uh, well, I'll count it out. We're down to Canfield. We're down to Salem in Division Two. We're down to South Range. We're down to Mooney in Division Three. We're down to Western Reserve. Uh, we're down to Kennedy and Heartland in in Division Four. Seven. That's it. That's and then all softball, we got. Softball, you got what? And, and softball, we have Ursuline and South Ursuline, Range. we have South Range, we have West Branch, uh, and and we we have that's it. That's, so we're down to ten. So, so we went we're down from to ten teams. Over ninety to ten. So you know, a little history lesson: ninety game or ninety teams to where we're 
this much coverage where we're doing everything, and then those 90 teams, they get beat, beat, eliminated, 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 eliminated. Now all of a sudden we got 10 teams. We got buku coverage yep. for the 10 teams. And when some of these teams, hopefully they don't, but when some of these teams are done and we get dwindled even further, we're going to have even more coverage for the teams that are left. That's, that's how it works. That's how, this, that's how this operates. That's, you know, so, yeah, if Canfield and Salem meet up in the, in the regional semifinals, it's why this, this idea of yours came to fruition for moments like that, for moments like hopefully uh, Friday, uh, if it turns out to be Friday. We might do uh, it on the road. Uh, Ursuline and South Range playing in a, in a regional championship game with the winner going to state and the loser. You you say great season, wonderful season, and we follow the winner to to Firestone. And you remember hopefully when we, they win it. Remember when we did the YSN, um, the heck would we call it? YSN something the South Range or South Range Crest. You remember when we did that yeah. for football? Yeah, I think we should do that. Absolutely, for softball, baseball. I mean, we would be crazy not to have a pregame show prior to the West Branch or West Branch prior to the Canfield Salem Regional Semis. Yep. Assuming South Range we get it. and Ursuline. South Range and Ursuline. It, it, it's a no brainer. Yep, it's an absolute no brainer that we uh, that we should be doing that and. And you know, I mean, it's I love the super regional or super districts because we can get possibility of regional championships like we might see in softball. Uh, I love the fact that uh, you could possibly see two teams that would have probably seen each other in the district championship game play for a regional semifinal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm a big fan of the of the Super Size Me District tournaments. Now it does have a drawback. Unfortunately, the drawback is Division Four. You know, Kennedy would have probably played Matthews, and Heartland probably plays Western Reserve or Jackson Milton. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd be great games, but you know, uh, Heartland and and JFK. Oh boy, wow, it's gonna be fun. Two aces, good God, that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. You get your partner back at some point. He's out there on the road. His games got canceled. Yeah, his games got canceled. I was like, oh, well, he's going to he's going to make it here, right? It was but too late. I know it was. I, I know it was. You showed up here at like ten thirty. You were you almost brought breakfast. I, uh, you might say I'm a little amped up. I can imagine. Yeah, you might say I'm a little amped up. Uh, I, yeah, I'm ready to go. It, it's uh, last night. I was like, okay, let's get a game. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, Mother Nature. Let's go. Bring it. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. It's like Christmas about, for you. I love about it. About 6.50, uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of fun. And uh, 7.05, well, they're going to introduce both teams. So that'll be that'll be a cool thing. And, and uh, we have the access to the PA announcer in into our board. So we'll be able to have that, and it'll sound really cool. Very cool. Um, and then we finally figured out yesterday the um, – the play-by-play can go through the whole stadium. We finally figured that one out. Wow. So, yeah. So anyone that's getting refreshments or going to the bathroom, you'll be able to hear the game. So don't worry about missing any action. You'll be able to hear the game in the concourse, in the restrooms. Uh, You'll be able to hear the game throughout the stadium. Awesome. It means buy some food. Yeah, go buy some food and... uh, Some souvenirs. Yeah, souvenirs and... And all that other. You good have to give stuff. the balls back. Or you get to keep the balls. You get to keep the balls. There you go. Yeah, you get to keep the balls. I may have to scarf one before the games, before the before the uh, opening day even starts. I may have to so, scarf. I say one. bring one back for HQ. We I, one out there. That's a. Uh, I did that every year. Every league that I was in, I got a Florida State league ball somewhere, a Southern league ball somewhere, and an Eastern league ball somewhere. So. Jordan hopefully. said he's going to hook us up with some scrappers gear to put behind you because I told him I said Michael needs a jersey. You know, all those things where, where, I mean, we need to be represented by the Scrappers. You're well, the voice. Well, Michael did play baseball. Not know. for the Scrappers. Not for the Scrappers, but he did play baseball. The, so the Birmingham. Birmingham Barons. Barons. And I'm good friends with a guy that was at the broadcaster yeah. for that team. And, and Michael was managed by the current manager of the Cleveland Indians. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, he, it's, yeah. We, well, good luck tonight. We're proud of you. We're looking forward to the call. And, and hopefully Mother Nature treats you to a, a you know, a, at least on time delivery. Well, listen, uh, and they're two and zero, and their pitching has been ridiculously good. 
uh, seven to one win last night. Now wait a minute, Ron. We know how this goes. Yeah, I know. YSU was doing yeah, pretty I, I, damn I know, good I until you, until you took over the microphone. I know, I know, I know. So damn it. hopefully, uh, Richie, uh, uh, call on line uh, one. Hope, hope, hopefully we uh, we get a victory tonight because I don't I can't bear to see another loss and on and my we will, resume for everybody. It's it, we will have uh, player profiles throughout the year. Ron will be doing interviews uh, for the broadcast as well, and we will have Coco Crisp on plenty. On YSN. So Indeed. It's going to be a great partnership with the Scrappers. Thanks to Jordan, Heather, Ron, thanks to you, and, and we're looking forward to it. And tonight, it all starts. Oh, man. The Seven, big scoreboard. 7.05 game time, uh, fireworks after the game. Tickets are available. They're still available. 530 uh, 505 or scoot online, com. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, yes, sir, buddy. All right, we got golf talk coming up next. Brian Tolnar from Mill Creek. Coming up next, stick around. It is a Wednesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember, folks, Hubbard can help. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Run or Wednesday edition of Running Point. I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. It is Wednesday. It's a little after one. It's time to bring in our good man from Mill Creek, uh, Brian Tolnar. We're going to talk some Mill Creek and some PGA. Brian, how are you today, sir? I am doing awesome. If we can dodge a little bit of rain this afternoon, I'll be doing even better. But, all right. Uh, all is well in the world of golf. All right. So we have uh, plenty of weather that's supposed to be coming into the area. Uh, and, and on a day like today where you know the rain is coming, uh, what what do you guys do differently, if anything, to uh, to prepare for uh, for a relatively tough weather day? 
Uh, we put on our best rain dance clothes. We do a uh, rain dance to try to avoid it from being like that. No, we had uh, a couple of our morning leagues went in and played this morning, so we're, we're good with that. Uh, we're hopeful by you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Everything that we've got coming will be out of here pretty quick. Uh, trending between 2 and 3 o'clock, it looks like on, on our end. So if it comes through and the percentages go down later this afternoon, we'll be in really good shape for league play. Uh, but, you know, just getting the golf course cut, you know, is the number one priority early in the morning, which we've accomplished that today. And, you know, just wait to see what type of rainfall that we get, what kind of severe weather that we have coming. We just had our uh, lightning alert system go off at our part three course about five minutes ago. So, you know, generally we tell everybody in about 10 minutes it'll be here because the weather pattern, you know, goes from the part three to us. Um, they always get a kick out of, you know, when they come in the pro shop, when they think bad weather will be here. When, when that thing goes off, you, you can pretty much tell them by the minute, and they're like, oh, you guys are pretty accurate. That's just pretty accurate. Uh, we just we just know because the, the par threes went off, and it, it, it's coming headed our direction. But, uh, you know, just you know, trying to avoid some of it, although, you know, it, as the ground gets uh, firmer, we could use a little bit of rain, but we, you know, don't want to see, you know, one to three inches in about a 20-minute or a half-hour, 45-minute period. A nice soaker rain or some of the rains that we've gotten up to this point at night have been absolutely perfect. But, uh, you know, you keep your fingers crossed always. Brian Tilnar from Mill Creek joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. All right, so over the weekend uh, we saw something that has never been done in terms of a uh, guy as old as Phil Mickelson, a 50-year-old, winning a major uh, you, you could see some 50-year-olds winning on tour, but a 50-year-old winning a major, there's something that you don't see very often, uh, if ever. Uh, Phil Mickelson stuns the world, and uh, from a uh, from a gambling standpoint, uh, boy, a $20 bet on someone that was darn near 300, 300 to 1 odds the week of the U.S. Uh, or the week of the uh, PGA Championship. You're looking at about six grand on a twenty dollar bet. That's um, that that's just how outrageous uh, the the chances of Phil Mickelson winning the PGA Championship, and yet seventy two holes worth of classic Phil Mickelson. I felt like I was back in the in the <laughs> early twenty first century or late nineties. The way he performed, I'll tell you what, it was spectacular to watch. You know, the history that was made this past Sunday. And just to give you a little example, we had our uh, U.S. Kids event here at, at Mill Creek, and, and the guy running it, obviously, he's a you know, fan, as well as all the kids, uh, their families. We had probably about 30 people in the pro shop that was on in the, at the restaurant. It was on on every set, was completely filled. And I, for whatever reason, their telecast was about three seconds ahead of where it was in the pro shop. So you could hear the cheers from the other end of the building at Mill Creek of people on the patio inside the restaurant cheering, yelling, and screaming as Phil was coming down the stretch, you know, just seconds before it hit, you know, the updated stuff in the, in the pro shop. But literally everybody stopped, you know, tournament, and they were posting scores to come in and watch this. They're like, we want to see this before you post the rest of the scores, which never really happens in anything that we do. You know, just to show you how great, you know, that was in, in, in history. But, you know, it, it, I felt that if on Thursday and Friday, if he was in it, giving himself a good shot on the weekend and, you know, come come down to Saturday, you know, being a shot ahead or being a shot behind, I, I thought he was playing well enough to, to hang in there, at least have a shot, you know, coming down the stretch on Sunday. And in true Phil Mickelson fashion, you know, we watched some hiccups. You know, down the stretch on 14 or 15 where he drove it in the water on Saturday right after Oosthuizen drove it in the water. You're thinking, oh, here we go. And, you know, obviously, you know, makes double bogey there. And if you look at his first three rounds, you know, his first round he had five bogeys and still shot under par. Second round he had three bogeys and shot under par. And then he had a double and, a, and a, a bogey or maybe two bogeys in Saturday's round, still shot under par and still had the lead and still was doing well. Got it to... I want to say ten under at one point, and and had you know a five or six shot lead, you know at that at that standpoint. And I thought if he could just get to Sunday, and you know Father Time is going to jump up and slap you at some point, and it's usually going to happen in the later rounds. I mean, we we saw that with uh, Tom Watson the British Open. I want to say about six or seven years ago when Stuart Sink won there, and 
you know, just ran out of gas the last couple holes and, and, and the playoffs. You know, had some similar shots that, you know, that Phil hit. Obviously, a shot on 17 that hit, you know, the crown in the green hit a really good shot. Just where it hit on the green, kicked it forward into the high grass. And then you're, you start thinking of Wingfoot in 2006 and, you know, missing the drive here, missing the shot there. Um, and on Saturday, you know, going back to that, you know, 14th hole, he finally drives it the fairway there and it hits it like 366, straight an arrow down the middle, knocks the second shot in the water, which was like, oh, right, here we go again. And, but, you know, fortunately for him, he knocked it in the water, it rolled through, his drop was on the green, so he got the putt and he got out of there, you know, unscathed. But, you know, Brooks Kapka was, was hard to beat out of the gate and they had a two shot swing early on, you know, coming out of the gate in the part five. Still made up the, just up the two shots with a two shot swing the other way, and then you know Brooks just didn't didn't have his A game like we're normally used to seeing him you know playing PGA Championships and U.S. Opens, you know driving the ball a little bit wayward and on the left hand portion of the golf course most of the day and most of the holes, but really fun to watch you know Phil come down the stretch and to see what you know he did to stay in there, hang in there, hang on. Um, you know, the, those last probably five or six holes, you know, we talked about it on the, on the broadcast the week before, you know, there's really no room to make up ground. You're going to lose the tournament before you win it on the, on the last couple holes, just how tough did they play. And to be able to do what he did, you know, coming down the stretch and just, you know, hug, hanging in there on 17, getting it up and down, albeit making a bogey, you know, avoiding a big number. You don't know how the golf ball is going to come out of the high grass behind the green by getting it on the green. That was that was a victory, and then you know, obviously having uh, two putts for a bogey gives yourself you know a little bit of a cushion. But you know, still on eighteen, it's a two shot lead. You have a two shot swing. You know, Brooks makes birdie on the last hole. You make bogey, and you're you're tied coming down the stretch. But I mean, held in there. Um, you know, hit a tee shot just nine miles on the last hole, and that nine iron into the hole hits the center of the green, and then you're like, you you, you could finally see some relief as a fan. And I was talking to people in the golf shop. I'm like, oh, you know, as we come down 15, 16, 17, and 18, it's like, I tell everybody, you know, buckle your seatbelts and put your hard hats on because you got Phil coming in. You, you never know what's going to show up in there. But so happy for him, so happy for the game of golf. It was really neat to see all the, the top tour players, you know, hanging out on the, the 18th hole as he came in. I mean, you're, you're talking a piece of history that's over 50 years old, being the oldest to ever win. and, and being over 50 is phenomenal. And, you know, a couple of weeks from now, he's going to be 51. So uh, I, I want to say he's three weeks from his 51st birthday coming around U.S. Open time and having an opportunity to get a special exemption from the USGA to get into that U.S. Open because he wasn't exempt. Now he's got a five-year exemption to play in the, in the next five. So, you know, having the, the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines is a plus for him, you know, coming up and looking ahead to the future. Um, it's seeing that that's 13 miles from his his home and, and where he grew up and played. Now the golf course has changed a little bit, but I mean it's probably his last legitimate shot of having a shot at a U.S. Open and riding the momentum of winning a PGA and and playing this week at, at the Colonial and and leading up to uh, the, the season's third major and a major that's missing you know off of his resume for you know controlling the career Grand Slam. I, I, I like where he's headed. You know, I, I was the first to write him off and, and Roy this year uh, early on. Just looking at their games, they really didn't have it. And you, you figure, you know, time may have passed both of them. And, you know, within a matter of three weeks, you know, obviously Roy wins in, in Charlotte and you've got uh, Phil winning the PGA Championship this week. You know, he was in the, the second column of, of odds. If you look at the odds makers, they do three columns each week. He was in the second row. I mean, not too, not too many uh, odds makers put too much stock in the Phil Mickelson game at this point. And I think a little bit he surprised himself. But, I mean, if you look at his rounds this year, he's making a ton of birdies, but he's also making a ton of bogeys and, and a ton of double bogeys. If he could just eliminate some of the doubles and most of the uh, bogeys with the pars here and there, he, you know, you would expect him to be in just about every tournament that he plays. Uh, based on how well he hits it from tee to green, and he, he still puts it well, and he's still a, a top echelon player at almost 51 years of age. So, you know, there's two things in, in my history of watching the game of golf. Actually, three, the, the 1986 Masters, where you know, obviously Jack Nicklaus wins, the 2019 Tiger Woods Masters, you know, having a, a slout, a uh, eight-year slump between victories uh, from a major perspective from Tiger Woods, and Phil Mickelson being able to win at almost 51 years of age. 
I mean, pretty spectacular if you're a fan of golf. I mean, it brought everybody in the fray. We had kids cheering. We had parents cheering. We had grandparents here for the kids' tournament all cheering. And basically the world stopped watching, you know, Phil and Brooks Kappa coming in those last two or three holes. It was spectacular to watch. Just a great day for golf on Sunday. Brian, there was some bit of controversy on the 18th uh, fairway when the crowds were really up against uh, Phil and Brooks Kapka, and, and Brooks was a little disappointed. Uh, he was actually kind of frustrated uh, because he had had a knee injury, and the crowd was such where I guess he tweaked his knee, and he uh, he didn't have uh, very many good things to say about the PGA, how they handled the uh, the crowd and, and the, the, the mob of people uh, that were following Phil and, and Brooks Kapka. Uh, hopefully in the near future, they'll be able to address that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to have, uh, you know, that, that scene. Uh, it's another thing when you have that scene, but then it affects the potential health of a golfer. No, I agree. I mean, it, it, you know, the look wasn't as great as you'd like to see it, but you know, any time that you've got a player coming down the stretch and he's hit the green with a two-shot lead, you know, seeing that crowd come up behind him, I can, re- I can remember Masters tournaments, British Opens, where Ronald Palmer was coming through the crowd. Uh, I was very reminiscent of that. Um, you know, seeing that, you know, Kia was just a different animal when it comes to course setup. You know, normally you're playing a hole that's tree-lined on both sides, and you've, you've got that buffer where you're holding the ropes and having the players walk slightly ahead of the ropes. You know, Kia was just pretty much wide open at the beach property. Uh, there's a lot of sand dunes, a lot of open areas. It's, it's, you wouldn't have enough rope to cover what they would need to cover. So I think a lot of people took advantage of that, and they wanted to see history being made, and I, and I get that, you know, as a fan. Um, but, you know, obviously getting in a player's personal space is a little bit different. And, you know, Brooks had a little while before you saw him make it to the green. Phil pretty much had his ball marked and was eyeing the putt up before uh, Brooks and his caddy. You know, throughout the course of the week and, and probably the last three or four months, for whatever reason, I, I don't know what it is. And, you know, not to put blame on anybody, but I mean, Brooks Capco with, you know, some of the things that he's gone through with the media, he's been pretty salty about, and I have no idea why. Uh, obviously, he's got, you know, a little bit of, of a step to stand on here with, you know, seeing that. But I mean, he's just. You know, sort of been grumpy all year for whatever the the, the course and the you know the the deal is. But uh, you know, the, at, at that point, you know, it's already done. Nothing happened to anybody. You know, there's no reason to dwell on it. And and, and I get that. But I mean, he's just been uh, for whatever reason grumpy with the media. So I I, I don't know. You know, there was a, a spot of him this week as well with you know Bryce DeChambeau walked behind him during the course of an interview, and he, he you know was wearing on television with that, and they had to bleep them out. So it's kind of like, you know, just do your thing, and, you know, the world revolves around everybody else, too. So, you know, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, and he and uh, DeChambeau had a little dust up, and you don't see that very often with no. uh, with golf. I mean, it's 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 a gentleman's type of sport where you, you don't see the, uh, I don't want to say fisticuffs, but you don't see... Uh, the, the two golfers going at each other. Uh, it's so it's it's a little different to see that. No, I mean it definitely is. I mean those guys played on Presidents Cups together. They played on Ryder Cups together. So I mean they're in the same locker room time and time again. They're they're on tour together. You know I, I get you know some of Brooks' frustration is when you when you play poorly and the outcome isn't what you want, and you go right into the media. You, you really needed some time to to decompress a little bit because you're still, you know, have some animosity about how you played and it, it, you didn't have the opportunity to get it done. But that's just the game it, itself. And any game that you play, no matter what sport it is across the board, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And that's just, you know, part of it is, you know, once the game is over, um, probably the person that does it the best is Jack Nicholas. You know, when he, you know, didn't play his best and got beat, went over, shook the other opponent's hand and said, well done. I played my best and couldn't catch you, and, and you move on. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's just being a little bit salty from not playing well, but, I mean, when you're talking to the media, I mean, you've got kids that are looking up to these, these individuals, and you got to be careful with what words you use and, and what your attitude is. I mean, it's you guys are out there, you know, as a player in, on a tour 
playing for millions and millions of dollars every single week. Uh, not too many people get to do that. Not too many people have that luxury of uh, calling the PGA Tour their job uh, and, and making all the sponsors money and making all the tournament first money. So, I mean, you got to be respectful of, you know, the kids that are looking up to you. And you got to be really careful what you say and, and the choice of words that you have in that forum. Yeah, Brooks Kapka is, Kapka is looking more and more like Shooter McGrath. Yeah. Yeah, he just, he just, I don't know, I'm angry for some reason. Yeah, it's, There's no uh, other way to put it. Yeah, it's, it's, but, uh, now having said that, all the other sports uh, that I've covered, uh, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, uh, the, the, the media is not allowed to go anywhere near those folks for a 10 to 15 minute cool down period. Uh, yeah. I don't know if the PGA has that or not, but uh, if they don't, they could certainly use it. Well, they do have the ability, if, if the player doesn't want to be interviewed, he could say, I'll pass. He, he doesn't have to give the interview. So, I mean, maybe in that case he says, yeah, maybe not, or I'll talk to you in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, can you get your thoughts together? I mean, it's, it's like anything. I mean, you, you, you play a bad round of golf the last couple of holes, you're thinking about it, and, you know, how do you improve the next one? And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a game that beats you up. We've said it here a, a, a million times during, you know, golf segments. Everything else that we do, it's, it's a game that can really beat you up. You know, once the once the switch is flipped and everything's done, it's done. It's in the past, and now you move on and say, "Hey, yeah, I was deficient here, X, Y, and Z. This is what I got to work on, and just didn't have my A game, couldn't get it done today." And you know, congratulations to Phil, and answer the next couple questions and move on. I mean, it's, it's as simple as it is. I mean, the guy's a, a proven winner. He's won six or eight times on the PGA Tour. He's got four majors. Uh, two PGA championships and two U.S. Opens. I mean, his career and his resume speak for themselves. For themselves, but you know, attitude and perception is is certainly high at that level. When you know you've got a lot of kids watching, uh, you got a lot of folks watching at, at home, and they don't you know, want to see and hear some of the stuff that you're saying. I mean, it's it's not that frustrating to a, to a guy that's working hard, doesn't make a whole lot of money, to, to listen to somebody that makes it a bazillion dollars a year whine about something. So you, know, you got to be cognizant of that. Brian Tolnar from Mill Creek joining us to talk some uh, PGA on uh, YSNlive.com. He appears via the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. All right, here we go. The Charles Schwab Challenge uh, at the Colonial Country Club in Fort Worth, Texas. A uh, pretty large field, the first PGA event after a major. You got a, a reasonably large field, including uh, Valley native Jason Kokrak, who will be golfing at 1244 local time down at Fort Worth. Uh, it, let's talk a little bit about the Colonial Country Club. What makes this golf course unique? I'll tell you what makes it pretty cool. This is the uh, the longest running non major tour event on the PGA Tour that's played at the same site. Uh, Colonial Country Club has been around uh, since 1946. They've had a PGA Tour event since so right around that time. Uh, you've got some notables that have won the event. You know, it, it's synonymous with uh, Ben Hogan, who was a member there uh, until he passed away. It's called Ben Hogan's Alley. So it's a it's got a lot of rich history. It's not very long. Uh, Compared to the golf course that they played this past weekend at almost 7,900 yards, you're looking at 7,200, although it plays a little bit shorter. Uh, you've got some great champions uh, that have won there. Sam Snead, Arnold Palmer, Lee Trevino, um, Jack Nicholas, Phil Mickelson's won there twice, is also in the field. Jordan Spieth, uh, Kenny Perry, Sergio Garcia. So the list is a who uh, when it comes to winning the tournament there. They have a wall of champions. Uh, all of those names are on the Wall of Champions. Uh, very unique event. They have what they call a uh, Champions Choice tradition there, which is a little bit different than every other event that we play on the PGA Tour. Colonial picks two uh, players, uh, whether they are a amateur or whether they are a junior amateur. Sometimes they're golf professionals. Sometimes they're collegiate players, and they put them in the field. Al Geiberger, Tom Weisskopf, Davis Love the third. Uh, Mark O'Meara, Curtis Drains have all been uh, some of the selections there. Dave Stockton uh, was the only uh, champion's choice that, it, that has made it in uh, to the tournament and won it. He did that in 1967. So there's some great history. Jordan Spieth you know, was one of those candidates when he was in Texas. They let him in the field as an amateur. Uh, so it has some uniqueness to it. Uh, in addition to that, it's an invitational tournament by the PGA Tour. 
field consists of 120 players. They, they had basically the top 120 players with the two uh, champions' choice picks as well. So you're looking at a solid field in these invitational events. You have to gain so many points uh, prior. You have to be in the top rankings of the FedEx Cup. They have the winners of the Arnold Palmer Invitational past three years, the Memorial Tournament, which we'll have next week. Uh, down in Columbus, uh, has the past three champions in the field, the Players' Championships, all four majors the last five years, the Tour Championships, the WT, WGC event winners are also in there, top 50 from the world. So it's a very upper echelon tournament when it, when it comes to playing the Charles Schwab Challenge. And the Colonial Country Club has been you know part of it in its history. It's designed by Cody Maxwell to par 70 this week, so you'll see a lot of low scores and a lot of uh, – Sub-70 scores as, as we go. Course record is held by seven players on the PGA Tour with a score of 61. Uh, length is a plus at this golf course, but it's not really needed. It, it's certainly an advantage. Uh, the, the player that's going to play the best here is going to fall right into that Hogan Alley, the five-time champion known for great iron play. A uh, player that plays well has to hit the irons extremely well. Fairways, fairways are relatively narrow. Putter. Not so much a premium on uh, driving length as, as much as it is on accuracy. Uh, chipping is also a premium. The rough for this event is uh, not going to be as deep as what we saw at Kiowa Island this past weekend, so it's going to be very easy to maneuver. There's only two par fives on the golf course, being at par 70. Uh, the first hole is a 565-yard par five. It's reachable by everybody in the field by probably mid to uh, long range irons. So they're going to have a lot of irons in those holes. you got to make a birdie out of the gate uh, to, to think about staying in the, uh, the hunt as the week goes goes along. Number 11 is the second par 5 at 635. About half to three quarters of the field have the opportunity to get into that one and two as well. And it's really a, a healthy dose of uh, 400 to 480 yard par 4. So the, the guys that play the par four is extremely well. We'll, we'll play well. So tee to green is going to be the biggest key this week, making sure you hit a lot of greens uh, in between these tree-lined fairways, which is a little bit different than what we saw at Kiowa with no trees on, on pretty much the entire property. Uh, but uh, great venue to play and a uh, long list of uh, good players in the field this week, which is unusual coming off the uh, major championship of the PGA Championship last week. Probably the best time of the year to go down into Texas. Uh, we haven't hit Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day weekend uh, coming up. So, uh, because I know living in Texas, uh, spent two summers there. Uh, it is it is incredibly hot. Uh, depending on where in Texas you are, there is some humidity. Uh, it's but it doesn't happen until around June, and then June, July, and August, mm-hmm. it gets insanely hot. Uh, in in the state of Texas, so it, it's probably the perfect time uh, to do this tournament. If they had done this tournament in July or August, you would be talking about triple digit temperatures the entire uh, four days, and you would have a lot of guys literally melting uh, before the okay. b- before the end of the of the tournament. So it's a good call by the PGA uh, to have this tournament played this early in the season. I think you're right. I think, you know, having this tournament in years past, it's been played in, you know, June and July. It does get extremely hot. And, you know, being able to go down there, you know, coming from South Carolina, it's an easy travel uh, before they boomerang back up to Memorial in uh, Dublin. That's the Irish course. But uh, it is a better spot on the schedule, I, I feel, as well. Okay. Uh, loaded field. Let's talk about your top five and some sleepers. You got it. We'll start off with uh, sleepers this week. I have one. Uh, Charlie Hoffman is, is my sleeper. It's a lot of greens in regulation. He's accurate off the tee. He's leading greens in regulation. You know, it's a place that he should do well. You know, from a guy that hits a lot of fairways and hits a ton of greens, he's going to give himself a lot of birdie opportunities. The greens down at Colonial aren't as big as what we saw over the past weekend and the, and the past couple weeks of the PGA Tour. So accuracy into those greens and hitting a lot of the greens is, is what he does the best. So he's going to give himself, if he if he continues his leading with greens and regulation, to have the most birdie putts and the most cracks at it. So if he can get some of those to knock down, Charlie Hoffman will be a name you see on the leaderboard this weekend. Coming in at number five, Ryan Palmer. It's a home game for him. He's a member at Colonial Country Club. He's 
well-versed in the conditions that you normally see in Texas. If the wind kicks up a little bit or you get some severe weather, he can flight the ball low, and he's going to be a great contender this week. Number four is Corey Connors. He's coming off a solid PGA championship. He's a Kent State grad and player. Uh, winner of the MAC title a, a few times. He's had a great six or eight weeks on the PGA Tour, and I think he rides the momentum of that and the PGA Championship where he held the lead and was on the first page of the leaderboard for a little bit. Corey Tanner's number four. Coming in at number three, a hometown favorite, Jordan Spieth, one of those uh, champion's choice guys, past champion. He's got uh, three runner-ups there. The 2016 champion, another one of those guys like Ryan Palmer, knows how to play when the winds kick up and you got to flight the ball low, and he putts extremely well on the, on the greens at Colonial. Uh, coming in number two this week is the defending champion, Daniel Berger. At a top five this past week, he was one of our, uh, one of our picks. You know, just couldn't get it done. He's been playing well. I'd like to see him go back to back, and I think he's going to be a worthy candidate. And, uh, Pick this week is going to be local from Warren, Jason Kokrap. I think he takes advantage of his length and accuracy off the tee to overpower some of the par fours to keep it in play. I think his accuracy and his length are going to give him a lot of birdie putts and a lot of opportunities to hit a lot of greens, and I'm picking him to sneak in with a victory this week. Great minds. Yeah, great week this past week at the PGA Championship. Great minds think alike. I, I think this course is completely designed for Jason Kokrak, and and Kokrak has done pretty well historically on this course. And uh, forget about Sunday, and hopefully Jason's forgotten about the uh, uh, the round on Sunday because up until that fourth and final round, I thought Jason had a really good tournament. I think he played great. I mean, not playing the two weeks prior and, and to be able what, to do what he did, you know, to be on you know, the ring of one, the first page, and being under par for, you know, three rounds. You know, the, the, the golf course played tough on Sunday. He had a lot more rounds over par than he had under under par, you know, coming down a stretch, and obviously PGA Championship pressure and some of the wins that they experienced, you know, 20 to 25 mile an hour wins makes it tough. And, you know, Pete Dye courses on oceanfront property, when you get a lot of wins, you know, it's it, you can hit some really good shots and get some bad breaks. So I think, you know, he ended up there on a, on a few of those holes. I mean, you, you're not off the fairway or rough, you know, too far, and you're in a you know, cluster of crabgrass or a tall fescue. So, you know, it, it really had the feel of a British Open this past weekend, and I think, you know, that was a little bit of it. So if you hit a couple shots offline, you pay the price by making some big numbers or making a series of bogeys. But I think, you know, this week he gets back to – what he looks at as home courses, tree line fairways, and you know, relatively straight holes that have a lot of length to them. He drives it well, and he drives it far. So I think that's a winning combination this week, and I think he's got an advantage on the field if he hits it as accurately as he has been, and he's hitting it with distance. He's going to have a lot of short irons into those, uh, you know, 450 to 460 yard par fours. I think that's a huge advantage for him, and if he plays and chips and putts it like he did this past week, I think he's going to be there at week 10, and I like his chances this week. He's been playing well all year, and he's starting to peak. Okay, I have him winning with a 14-under score. Is 14-under about where it should be, or is it a little low? I said 15-under, so you're right in the wheelhouse. I like it. All right, uh, let's uh, since we did not have the, uh, uh, the tip of the week, let's do our uh, tip of the week this week. Off a little bit of last week. I had this lined up, but we ran late on time because it was a big week with the major coming up, and we spent a lot of time on the coverage to it. Uh, it's called concentration and visualizing the shot. And this this week, and this week, we wanted to use that to watch the guys play. So if you have the opportunity, like many did, because the ratings will see the roof for the PGA Championship of you know watching Phil Mickelson and how he played in particular. You know, you talked a lot about losing focus you know, leading into the PGA Championship. So we wanted to shore that up last week. So Phil, Phil did that as well. He threw it up, you know, more than plenty and, and went home with the victory in, in the Wanamaker Trophy. Um, you know, having him on the 17th hole, you'll notice he, he took a club that he wanted to hit, got up to hit, stopped, and, and backed off his tee shot on 17. So, I mean, one of the things that he said in the post-interview was, you know, he couldn't, you know, really stay focused on picturing the shot that he wanted to hit. Um, they've got a negative thought or two in there. So, 
you know, any time that you see a player do that, it's 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 a good thing. It's you know, stepping off, getting rid of those negative thoughts. Although I thought he did a very good shot, he did get the result. He ended up you know wanting because it carried to a ridge and it kicked forward and went into some high grass beyond the green. But it was on the line that he wanted. It was on the flight that he wanted. You know, anytime you're coming down the stretch and you've got some nerves, you're you're pumped up and you're feeling the adrenaline in the, in the golf club. Golf clubs and golf balls have a tendency of tearing a little bit farther than you would like them by five to seven yards. So I think that was the difference in the shot that he hit. I think he hit it as good as he wanted to and it just had some adrenaline going to where he carried it about five yards too far. But, you know, shot pattern, the shot shape was what he wanted. Um, the ability for him to back off of that shot, regroup, go through his routine, give himself some positive thoughts, really helped him stay in the moment. And I think that that's a good lesson for you know anybody playing in a club championship, anybody playing you know competitive golf. Uh, could even be in a league round where you know you got some nervousness. You know the last thing that you think of or last thing that you envision before you hit the shot is probably going to be where your golf ball is going to be nine out of ten times. So you know staying with you know the level of concentration that's needed and visualizing the shot, I think is you know paramount. So I think staying focused. You know, the golf swing itself is about two seconds. I mean, from back to finish, and boom, the ball's gone, and and you're pretty much there. So what I tell everybody is, when you know, when you're hitting a shot, and especially when you get into a competitive situation, or you're playing for a couple bucks with your buddies, you know, two practice swings, feel the shot that you're trying to hit, look at the target, see where you want to hit it, visualize the shot, visualize the shot going to where you want to go, set up and make it happen. You know, I think you know. A loss of focus or seeing something, a bunker or a pond or a lake or a stream, before you, you know, get over the ball and you hit it, I think you need to restart everything and, and, and focus on some positive things. Stay in the moment, stay wired in. You know, that last thing, that image or last impression that gets in your mind is going to be where you hit it nine times out of ten. So we want to make sure that it's right where we're looking. It's the center of a fairway. It's the center of a green. Uh, carrying to a certain spot if you're laying up on a hole, but it's always going to be a positive spot. And I'll, I'll give you this one to sort of wrap it up. The uh, PGA did a, a golf, golf psychology course that I took many years ago, and there's about 40 golf professionals in the room. And they set up a hole, and basically it was, you're standing on a tee, goes the scenario. You're standing on a tee box, on the back tee, 260 to carry it to the fairway. You have seven bunkers down the left-hand side. You have a pond that's about 200 yards on the right-hand side with a creek that goes all the way through from about 300 just through the left-hand side of the green. You've got a couple uh, green side bunkers as well. So your second shot you know, comes into play with the creek because it goes tightly close to the hole. Uh, so you've got some hazards. You've got some stuff to deal with. You've got out of bounds beyond the green because the property ends there. They went around the room of these 40 golf professionals, of which I was one of them, and said, you know, what do you see when you're when you're staring at this hole? You know, as, as your player standing on the tee, and, and went around the room, and it's, you know, 40 pros give you the answer. Well, you want to avoid the fairway bunkers down the left-hand side because they're, they'll get you in trouble, and you can't you have a good second shot to carry the water on your on your next shot to hit the green. You know, I, I see some a crick on the right, a pond on the right as well. Uh, we can't hit it too far in the fairway because the fairway runs out and it rolls into this creek at, say, 280 or 300 yards, and everybody you know, gave their opinion. Not one PGA professional in that room said, the only thing that I'm looking at is the fairway and the green. So you know, just how easily you know, players at every level and even at the, the upper end level from a PGA professional standpoint that plays in tournaments and plays a lot of competitive golf, and you know what's one of the reasons why they got into this career. You know, looked at the positive, you know, aspects of what are we looking at as a player? Where are you trying to go? It's where we were trying to avoid. Was pretty much all forty out of everybody in the in, in the room. So, you know, looking at the fairway, looking at a spot in the fairway you want to hit it is is from point A, which is the T to the fairway. That's your first thought. The second thought is from fairway to green. Where do I want to hit it on the green? Do I want to hit it in the center? Do I want to be aggressive and go at the hole? Do I want to play conservative, maybe left of the hole because the green slopes a certain way? Not one golf professional out of 40, you know, spotted that. And basically the guy said, you know, this is, this is why, you know, players 
at every level have trouble because they're looking at where not to go as opposed to where we want to go. So I think, you know, having that concentration, having the visualization to see the shot before you hit it and to see the spot that you want to go is vitally important. And I think that's one of the reasons why Phil hit 17 green, although it rolled through, one of the reasons why he backed off, you know, to, re- to regroup his thoughts. You know, maybe he saw the water on the right. Maybe he saw the bunkers on the left. He wanted to regroup and get that positive mindset of, I want to hit the left portion of the green. That's my safe spot. And if it runs, it runs. And I still have a chip and an opportunity to get it up and down, make bogey at worst. So I think visualization, their visualization and concentration are probably – you know, very important when it comes to the golf tip of the week and that last thought, making sure that you're in the positive will keep you in the moment. I had a friend of mine who's now in, uh, down in Florida, uh, but when we golfed, uh, he would always, before the shot, he would always put both hands on either side of his head and just block everything on the sides, and it's like tunnel vision where he would see yep. the uh, what's in front of him, 150, 200, 250 yards in front of him, and he's envisioning a shot that way, m- much like t- tunnel vision. And I always looked at that and was wondering, why would why would you put your hands up to your face? And I, now it makes sense because you don't want to see the woods to the left, the water yep. to the right. Uh, you want to see what's in front of you and, and not worry about if you, uh, if you hook a shot or if you uh, slice a shot. You, you just want to go dead center. And, and you know having that tunnel vision is, is a good thing that you, you need to have every time you take a shot in golf. I, I, I think that that's key. You know, focusing on the right things, I think, are paramount in hitting a good shot. I mean, you do that when you go to the driving range. You're always aiming at targets. You're always trying to hit it to a certain spot. I think what happens is when you get to the golf course, some holes look wide open, so let me just try to rev this one up and hit it an extra 20 yards where you don't have to. Just hit it and play. It makes the game a lot easier. Or you also have the amateur that says, well, let me get my oldest golf ball because i got to hit over water. It's going to be my water ball in case I hit it in. Well, you've already put a negative connotation in before you hit the shot. So take that new golf ball out, focus on the spot on the green, and hit the shot that you want to hit. You know, don't don't put that negative in before you hit the shot. You know, stay stay focused, stay in the moment, and back off if you have to. Start the process, the routine over again. I think it's vitally important. Before we let you go, and we're speaking with Brian Tilnar, he he is the PGA guru. He also runs Mill Creek. You made mention that the Colonial Country Club has narrow fairways. Uh, in comparison to Mill Creek, because Mill Creek has some narrow fairways. Uh, are we talking Mill Creek narrow fairways, or are we even uh, more narrow uh, than Mill Creek? I would say they're pretty close. You know, any time that you're, you know, coming into a golf course in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and 50s, they're all kind of built on the same premise of, you know, tree, very tree-lined. Uh, Corn, you've got the Trinity River that sort of, you know, runs around the property there as well. But, I mean, you know, tall, tight trees, you know, very you know, good from a definition standpoint of how they wanted you to work the ball, how Terry Maxwell wanted you to work the ball on the golf course. I think that that's important. Donald Ross, same way. You know, he wanted you to work the ball a certain way, and that's the way that he shaped his fairways. I think you're going to see a lot of similarities to how wide, how narrow they are in certain spots. I think they're very similar to what you see here on both the north and the south courses, you know, go, going forward. Uh, you know, it, it is very tight, very tree-lined. Uh, there's, there's a lot of accuracy that's, that's needed off the, the top of the tree. You've got a couple holes that are slightly right, slightly left. So you really have to position your ball well this week, similar to what you have to do here locally at, at, at Mill Creek. All right, before we let you go, uh, let's talk a little bit about Mill Creek. Obviously, the weather uh, today is going to be a little frightful, at least for a couple of hours, uh, and then things will get a whole lot better for this evening and and coinciding, of course, with the Scrappers' home opener. Uh, But this weekend, lots of golf to be be played. The temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler. Uh, Give everyone the 411 on how they can uh, reserve their tee time for Mill Creek. You got it. Hard to believe we're heading into Memorial Day weekend, which is a big weekend for golf, uh, not not only here locally but you know around the country. 
Uh, what you want to do is you want to call us at 330-740-7112, make a tee time, or you can go to millcreekmetroparks.org on the golf page. It has a book online icon. You can go there as well. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday will be a holiday weekend. Uh, it tends to fill up pretty quick, not only here at the north and the south and on the practice range, but our par 3 course as well. So it's just a great time to get out with some family, experience our family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings after 5.30. A good way to get out at a very inexpensive rate at 25 bucks for a family of four, kids under 15. With two cars, you get to play pretty much as many holes as you want. Uh, just a great game to play with the family and be around the family as, as we progress into this Memorial Day weekend. Just a, it's a great link to family and, and playing golf with your buddies and uh, seeing your friends. So we'd love to have you out here at Mill Creek, and uh, you know we're gearing up for a big month of June. We have our AJGA event coming the 19th through the 25th, and we also have our junior camp on the 14th, 15th, and 16th, along with another Callaway Demo Day on the 29th. So we're heading into the meat of our season. We've got PGA Junior League underway, and our, our team's assembled here at Mill Creek. They start their first match on the 11th of June, and we've got three matches in June, three matches in July, and an all-star tournament, so we're happy for the kids and happy to give them an opportunity and a venue to play some competitive golf along with our drive, chip, and putt in July and Junior Optimus in June, and Northern Ohio PGA section makes a stop from Cleveland down here on the 18th, so action-packed uh, month coming ahead, and it kicks off this weekend with the uh, Memorial Day holiday, so love to have you here at Mill Creek. And my father and a bunch of uh, older gentlemen are going to be golfing at Mill Creek on the North Course on Tuesday morning. So I'll I'll make sure that uh, I tell them to uh, rattle your uh, rattle your cage a little bit. Absolutely, tell them to say hi. I certainly will, Brian. Always a pleasure, and hopefully uh, our uh, prediction comes true with our local guy Jason Kokrak. Uh, that is a uh, that that's a. Uh, it's a uh, a guy that a lot of people are now starting to get on board with. Uh, I looked at the odds this morning. Uh, it was sixty two to one. Uh, he has gone down to thirty to one. Believe it or not. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty so good. I know he was in the top twenty. So I think he's. I think he's going to do well this week, just based on his past history and how well he's he's played. Not only you know last week, but you know the weeks leading into two weeks prior where he took off. And I was kind of shocked that he took those off because he was playing so well. But he's got a formula. He's got his uh, his agenda and his schedule laid out. So I think it's, he knows what's the best for him and his game. And I look forward. Hopefully, uh, we're calling him crowning, calling and crowning him a champion this weekend. But a uh, great weekend for golf here in Mahoney Valley. Hopefully, that is the case. Always a pleasure, Brian. You got it. Have a great afternoon. Uh, you. you as well. Brian Tolnar, uh, he's the guy that runs Mill Creek, and uh, we love when we uh, talk some PGA and Mill Creek with Brian Tolnar. All right, give me a timeout. It's a Wednesday edition of Running Point. We're back in a bit. Stick around. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible-tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. 
If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your pre-owned vehicle and much more. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their pre-owned vehicle at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sutman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Running Points, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Ron Potester with you. MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Uh, there is some showers in the area. They're coming so much closer to us. And uh, about uh, in about a half an hour or so, everyone's pretty much going to get um, uh, the, uh, the shower activity. And uh, we'll see what happens in terms of whether or not the Division II district championship games and the D3 district championship games uh, will be played. Uh, we've already uh, canceled the game at Niles between Rootstown and South Range. That's already been uh, canceled. The uh, Division Three regional softball tournaments have already been canceled as well. Uh, West Branch uh, in the D2 regional semifinal uh, at Akron Firestone. Uh, that game has been moved from 5 o'clock until 8 o'clock tonight. Pretty good chance they play that game. This The uh, showers should be out of the area by about 6 o'clock. Uh, it should be out of the area. Uh, and and like I said, we should be playing baseball at Eastwood tonight uh, when the Scrappers open up the 2021 home portion of the inaugural Major League Baseball Draft League. By the way, uh, for those wondering... It has been 632 days since the Scrappers last played a game at Eastwood Field. 
For those keeping score, September 2nd, 2019, the Scrappers defeated West Virginia in the final game of the 2019 regular season. Scrappers won that game 2 to nothing. Of course, 2020 was canceled. The, the minor league season was canceled completely uh, because of COVID. And then, obviously, the disintegration of the New York Penn League. Fortunately for this area, uh, Major League Baseball knocked on the door of the Mahoning Valley Scrappers and invited them to be part of a six-team uh, draft league in which players that are eligible for the upcoming Major League Baseball draft would be able to play in a league encompassing 68 games. So uh, the draft league, uh, we get our home opener tonight at East Woodfield. Let's get to the phone lines, 330-886-0813. Rich, you're on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. What up, brother? Well, I can sure use them today. Well, today, actually, not so much. He kicked my butt yesterday, Ron. Well, I'm telling you, that was uh, that was a little warm and toasty today or yesterday. And uh, when when the rain gets out of here, uh, it's going to be a whole lot chillier. It, it'll be uh, more like May weather than what we experienced for a couple of days this week. Bring bring it on, brother. Bring it on. By the way, good afternoon, young men. Good Both afternoon. Well, Anthony's not here. He uh, he oh, okay. was he was supposed to be doing the Division Three regional semifinals from Youngstown State, but that's not going to happen because of the weather. So they've moved that to tomorrow. How's your game looking for the night then? Uh, everything is a, is a good to go at, at Eastwood. And, and, you know, obviously the difference between Eastwood and the other facilities, Eastwood has the full tarp uh, for the infield, and they put it on yesterday uh, or last night, I should say, or this morning. Uh, and it's it's on. I mean, it's once the rain comes and goes, all they'll have to do is take that tarp off of the infield, uh, let the water go into the outfield, and and the drainage will take care of that. Now we'll play some baseball, and we'll probably play on time. Excellent. You know, I'm having a I'm having a difficult time. I'm getting I'm getting to YSN Live Sports. I get to the scrappers. But I can't find the uh, the uh, icon that says live broadcast. Interesting. Okay. Uh, does, well, do, you know, it's, it's probably an old guy with a smartphone problem. Is. Okay. Do, do, does do, is there an arrow? Is there an arrow that's uh, like a play button? Well, I have to check that out. I didn't look for something like yeah, that. Yeah. If if there's an arrow with a play button, you just play, hit on that, and and then you'll be able to. Uh, You'll be able to uh, uh, get the broadcast. Um, yeah, I, I got to hear. I, I got to hear your voice over forty-eight states and happy Canada. Now, <laughs> <laughs> only, <laughs> only this time, unlike Pete Franklin, uh, this would be worldwide. Uh, so, um, yeah, this this uh, anyone uh, with a uh, with a computer uh, can most definitely hear the broadcast. Uh, so that that uh, that's something that. We'll uh, we'll certainly uh, have a lot of fun with. Okay, I'm on the site. Yeah, there's a there's a like a play arrow. Uh, you just hit that at about six fifty, and I'll be on the air. Sounds good. Okay, um, tribe. Yep. Uh, listen to Tom Hamilton spout some stats off on I believe it was Sunday, saying that they're batting like under under two fifty or batting two thirty three against fastballs. The worst hitting team in major leagues against the fastball. I mean, run a ten hit fastball, you don't belong in a major league. Well, you know, I mean, this isn't just a, this isn't just an Indians problem. This is a major league baseball problem. Uh, a week or so ago, the numbers came out that the average number of hits per game uh, per team is down uh, to a point that we have not seen since 1908. Uh, now that was oh. the middle of the dead ball era, but the amount of hits or lack of uh, of hits uh, per per team, uh, the average number of hits per team is is the lowest it has ever been since 1908, which is the middle of the dead ball era. Uh, truth be told, Rich, I mean I, I've been I've been banging on this drum for the last couple of years. Analytics is a, is can be a really good tool to use. But it is not the be-all, end-all. This whole launch angle 
uh, stuff. It, it, you're you're making it way too complicated. See the ball, hit the ball, uh, and it, you know just the the whole idea of not being able to hit the ball the opposite way. Uh, you, the, the, a guy that comes up to the plate and is limited to the point where you have a shift on, and you you don't have uh, the the stones to put a bunt down up the third base line and and force your way out of that shift or hit the ball the opposite way and force the team uh, to uh, to stop playing that that sh- that style of defense. Uh, oh. it, it just it it's maddening right now and and truth be told rich uh, between that and the and the fact that the baseball is being doctored not by everyone but by enough pitchers where uh you're finding some strange things on a baseball uh <laughs> it, it's it's not a watchable product right now it it it's and it's turning into a a product that is going to turn off a lot of people well you know we could start a rumor uh Major League Baseball is going to going to juice the ball now. <laughs> well, I mean, it. You know, I I kind of thought that this was. I, I was hoping it wasn't going to happen. But when, do you remember when Major League Baseball bought out Rawlings and and they said, "Hey, we're we're going to make our own ball." I mean, I that red flag got hoisted immediately when I saw that. I, I don't like. I didn't like that move. I still. Don't, I still don't care for it. Yeah, you, you got to let a third party uh, be in control of that baseball. You you can't buy the baseball. It, it now it just turns the whole product into into something completely different. And I, I uh, and between that and the fact that you know there was a story last week in the Athletic where Ken Rosenhall uh, reported that uh, a National League team uh, had a baseball. Uh, it was a baseball that was the product of a rookie getting his first hit in Major League Baseball, uh, okay. and and obviously when a kid gets their first hit, uh, the, 99 times out of 100, they're able to get that ball back to that kid. Uh, so okay. that kid's in the bus on, on their way back to the hotel, and they're passing the ball around, and there's strands of glue on the ball. Now, I mean, come on. It, it, I mean, wow. I've been calling it for the last year or change. Guys are, are getting extra spin on the ball. Okay, you, yeah, you're throwing the ball hard, but you can get extra spin on the ball if you have a, six, a sticky substance on your fingers and, and it's up against the seams or it's up against the baseball. Yeah, you're going to get a whole lot more RPMs if you got stick them on your fingers. God, would, would Phil Necro love that one? Boy, no kidding. I mean, uh-huh. you know, back in the day when we were kids, you know, guys that were trying to cheat would have n- nail files, uh, you know, the sandpaper nail file uh, in the back of their pant, uh, in, in their pants, and 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 they would have a uh, a little piece of sandpaper uh, that they would uh, conspicuously uh, dig out and and uh, rub on the baseball every so often. Uh, you know, and and when you got caught, you know the umpires, uh, if they if they thought you were cheating, they would they would inspect the uniform, and you know they would find the, the you know the product and kick the guy out of the game. Well, you know now it's to the point where, uh, as far as I'm concerned, treat the guys that are doctoring the baseball up like you treated the juicers. Give them a half a year suspension in the first time they do it and a full year suspension the second time they do it and kick their ass out of the game the third time they do it. You know, I remember I remember back in the day when Mad Mag remember Mad Magazine? Oh yeah. Let me worry. Famous <laughs> Alfred E. Newman. But they showed a baseball pitcher on a mound and he um went out to shake him down. And when he shook him down there was this uh pile of uh all, all, all the things that the, the players carried, they had to bring shovels out to, to shovel it off the mound. That was a classic. No, it just it's it was hilarious back in the day, you know, watching uh, Gaylord Perry get shaken down, you know, because because they're trying to find the uh, the grease that he would have on a ball or or the uh, uh, the the extra uh, powder. 
uh, that Gaylord Perry <laughs> would have on, on on his body. I mean, it was it was hilarious. And and look, I mean, truth be told, I mean, let's be honest. Gaylord Perry went to the Hall of Fame on one pitch, an illegal pitch, a spitball. That's that's what brought Gaylord Perry to the Hall of Fame, or at was, least or at least the smart. illusion that he was using a spitball. He, he was a true artist. Oh, absolutely, he was. Hey, on a final note, um, uh, how was the interview and talk? How is talking with Coco Chris? What's the scoop with this guy? Uh, he's he's fantastic, Rich. He uh, he's a guy that. Uh, he's he's happy to be here. He's a family guy. I mean, it, it hurt like crazy for him to leave his family because he's got some young kids at home. But uh, you know, it's a golden opportunity for Coco. I mean, I, I don't know if if he has uh, any plans to uh, go into professional baseball a, as a manager. But you know, judging by what he has done the first two games, w- w- something that we're all hopefully going to appreciate uh, with this baseball team. The first two games of the series against West Virginia, these guys were pushing the envelope offensively. They would go first to third on a uh, on a base hit. And he, even if it was a base hit to left field, they went first to third. Uh, this I is a team, it. yeah, this is a team that is not afraid to run, not afraid to push the envelope. The situational hitting the first two games of the of the season has been outstanding. Uh, the the bullpen, oh my God, uh, the bullpen that that Mahoning Valley has. Uh, you got guys throwing in the low to mid nineties, and and just some really really explosive sliders, curveballs, and changeups. The uh, the Scrappers definitely have a a, a fun team, and hopefully uh, we'll get a lot of people out to watch the team starting tonight at Eastwood. You know, uh, with this aggressive play you see on the bases and with the hitting, that's a direct reflection off of our manager because we know what he played like. Yeah, well, I mean, it, look, I mean, Coco flat out said, somebody asked him because it was a Q&A session on Wednesday when we had to meet the manager uh, up at Eastwood, and he flat out said, look, I'm going to let these kids do whatever they want to do until they can't do it. Then the shackles come on. Nice. Nice. I mean, and, a- and look, Rich, when you think about it, it makes sense because this league is all about the kids trying to improve their draft stock. I mean, that's what we're here for. Yeah, winning games is great, don't get me wrong, but all of these kids are here to put their best foot forward in front of the scouts. And I know some people are going to sit back and say, well, isn't that kind of a kind of an antithesis of baseball where baseball's a team game but you're going to have a bunch of kids trying to trying to to uh, you know trying to raise their draft stock well yeah you got to have a little bit of showmanship in this and you're going to have a lot of guys that are going to try to do the best they can to show the scouts what they can do uh and you know i i think i think it's it's going to uh, I think it's going to turn into some really, really competitive and really good baseball. I'm excited about it. I'll catch you on the air tonight. Thank you for your time. You got it, brother. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. I I think long term, and again, this um, we, we talked a little bit about this on Monday when uh, Jordan Taylor was on. And we'll get Jordan on uh, during the course of the season. Uh, but Lord knows they're busier than the one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest today uh, trying to get everything uh, situated. And, oh, by the way, you know, we get rain uh, for the for the next couple of hours. And, you know, but, but have no fear. We're going to be playing baseball tonight at Eastwood. I don't have any doubts that we'll have, uh, we'll have baseball at Eastwood uh, tonight at 7.05. But this... In, in a normal season, you're probably not seeing the Major League Baseball Draft League start this early. I think one of the reasons why it started this early, Major League Baseball took advantage of the fact that there were no NAIA national tournaments, no Division Three, and no Division Two national tournaments. Uh, the only World Series that is going to be played is Division One, So you have kids that are JUCO players. You have Division Three players. You have Division Two players. And you got a few high school kids. 
Now, the draft league is open for anyone who is eligible for the 2021 Major League Baseball draft. That includes high school seniors, kids that are playing in junior colleges, JUCOs, uh, kids that play in uh, college and they're draft eligible. Uh, you got to be three years in uh, academically or playing wise, three years in in order to be draft eligible. Uh, so I think this year, because you didn't have a D3, D2, or JUCO World Series, Major League Baseball said, okay, we can we can start this the week before Memorial Day and end the season in mid-August. I think next year, assuming we are all past COVID, which I think is a pretty good assumption, I think next year you're probably going to see the the – Major League Baseball draft league start in early June. Because you figure a 68-game schedule, if you were to start the season, say, on June 1, which is a Wednesday uh, next year, and uh, assuming that you have the uh, Mondays are off, pretty much. Uh, Mondays are off except for uh, various days. Uh, you're still going to be looking at a 68-game schedule where the season would end probably August the 20th or August the 21st. And that's good news. For this area, that would be good news. I mean, if you started the season on June the 1st next year uh, and and ended the season on August 20th or August 21st, uh, you would still be ahead of the curve in that the scrappers would not be going up against the two biggest entities uh, that this area has in the late summer, early fall, and that is high school football. Next year, high school football would be set to start on August 25th and August 26th and 27th. Uh, A lot of teams play on Thursday. That would be the 25th. Uh, Friday the 26th, uh, and then uh, Saturday the 27th. The regular season would come to a close on uh, the 28th of October, and then you would have the tournaments being played, uh, and the final weekend of the playoffs would be the, the December 9th and 10th next year. That That's where they're going to be. The other entity that you would not be going up against is the Canfield Fair. Now, assuming that um, we have a fair next year, and and I can't believe that we wouldn't, next year the fair would be August 31st through September the 5th. September the 5th next year is Labor Day. Well, the season comes to an end August 20th or August 21st, so... You're not going to go up against high school football. You're not going to go up against the Canfield Fair. This year, it's the same thing. You're not going to go up against um, uh, high school football this year because, well, the season is going to end on uh, August the 18th. That's it. The, The season ends August the 18th. Well, the first game of the 2021 high school football season is going to be on Thursday, August the 26th. Friday, August the 27th, Saturday, August the 28th. Uh, The Canfield Fair, if we have one this year, will probably go September 1 through the 6th, uh, Wednesday to Monday. Uh, So you're not going to be going up against high school football and the Canfield Fair like in previous years. If you remember when the New York Penn League was was still around, the season would start in mid-June after the draft, and you would end the season, 76-game season, Labor Day. And then the playoffs would start uh, that Wednesday after Labor Day. Well, you know, one of the tough things for the scrappers was going up against the Canfield Fair and going up against high school football. With this league, you're not going to be going up against the fair or high school football. Uh, so I think it's it's detriment. I, I think it's going to be very very um, good for the scrappers 
this this year and and in future years to not go up against college or uh, college football, let alone high school football, and the Canfield Fair. Uh, I love the fact that it's that it's starting today, May the twenty sixth. But I think that uh, next year it's probably going to be starting a week later. It, it'll probably start a week later. Uh, and maybe two weeks later. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Major League Baseball decided, hey, you know, let's let's start this a little bit later because, you know, next year, JUCOs and, and D3 and D2, they'll all have their World Series. So, you know, we should probably start this thing uh, a little bit later in the season. I think they started this year because D3, D2, and the junior colleges don't have a national championship playoff. So that's why uh, we're starting so early. And again, the Scrappers off to a 2-0 and start. They knocked off West Virginia last night, 7-1. to uh, They will open up a two-gamer with State College, and then Frederick comes to town uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tickets for all five games, the five-game homestand starting tonight. Tickets are available, limited tickets, uh, but tickets to every game, uh, the first five games of the homestand, they are available. You can contact the Scrappers, 330-505-0000. That's 330-505-0000. Or you can go online, Mahoning Valley Scrappers, or I'm sorry, mvscrappers.com. mvscrappers.com. Get online, get your tickets uh, for this first homestand. Uh, limited tickets, because they're not selling every seat at Eastwood Field yet. The next homestand, they're selling all the tickets. So there you go. Uh, DJ Yokely is in studio. I got a bad feeling that we got cancellations. Obscene Park in Struthers, Ohio has canceled uh, games for today. They will go tomorrow all fields at 6 p.m. D2 on 1, D3 on 2, D... I think that should be D4 four on three yeah um all the games are going to start at six oh wait a minute now just got an update actually they're going to keep d four on one put d two on two and d three on three they might have heard us the d four game being so exciting they might have heard us I'm just I'm, I'm just throwing that out there that is interesting canfield on two it's not a disrespect factor. It's the fact that I think a lot of folks, and, and, and here's the other thing, and, and I, I'm going to think outside the box for a second. Cardinal Mooney's playing an out-of-town team, Burton Berkshire. Mm-hmm. Don't know how many people from Burton are going to show up for this game. Probably not going to be field one capabilities. I have no idea how many people are going to show up from Canton to see Canton South. But I do know... You're going to get a hell of a crowd from Warren JFK, Mm -hmm. and you are going to get a hell of a crowd from the Heartland Christian people. Field one, that that makes sense because you got two local teams that are going to bring a pretty nice-sized crowd. That makes an awful lot of sense. Even though Canfield brings a lot more people, uh, it it does make a little bit more sense to put Kennedy and and Heartland on field one because it's two local teams. I am interested, man. I this this is intriguing to me. I know why they're trying to do it. They pushed it back an hour, so now it's all at six o'clock. That's not bad. That's, which is good. Yeah. It gives everybody the chance to get there. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I'm interested to see the crowd between one and two, because I think there's a lot of people that want to see this Canfield team. That's why I, I really wish they would have done one game. You know, put put Heartland and and JFK on one, and then put Mooney and and. What's the other team? I'm sorry. Mooney uh, and uh, Burton Berkshire. Yeah, Berkshire. Put them uh, at, at two and then play a 7.30 or an 8.30 game. At Canfield. Listen, Canfield at 8.30 is going to be nice. I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I would love that. No, I wouldn't be opposed because, to that. Because how many people from Heartland and how many people from JFK are going to stay just to, to watch that game? That's, that's, that's actually not a bad idea. And, and you know, the only thing that, that, that would, you know, be the fly in the ointment is how many of those kids want to play uh, at 8.30 at night? Uh, you know, for me personally, I would love to play at nighttime. The lights are on. 
on the main field. Let's go. I, I think I would love to see Canton, Canton South and Canfield in prime time uh, with the lights on at Bob Scene Park on a on a gorgeous but little chilly night because the frontal system is going to be passed. And it's going to be a little cold. Not as bad as Friday. Friday Not as bad as Friday. 59. Yeah. Uh, Friday's going to be a little chilly. Uh, but uh, it's it it'll be a little chilly for uh, for Thursday night. Um, but I, I'm with you. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of back to back games, and I, I think that you're probably on to something. Knowing that Kennedy and Hartland, whoever whoever won that game, will heck win or lose. I, I think a lot of folks would hang around and and watch a Canfield uh, Canton South game uh, for the D two championship. Still trying to find any information on uh, the Salem game. No information at this point is good information. Yeah. Um, because that means that we're still playing. So, man, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm surprised. We did get a little rain. I don't know if, if they got more rain than we did. We we had rain for two minutes, then it was sunshine. It was kind of like back to the future, too, out there for a minute there. But it, supposedly we haven't got banged as, as hard as we're going to get here in the next – yeah, I'm, I'm I'm watching I'm watching the radar, and we're going to be in the clear till about five thirty, and then it's going to rip loose. So now uh, it's moved three hours. Well, it's it, this part of yeah. the Mahoning Valley. Um, it, I'm looking at the Warren area. Warren is now out and and out of uh, out of business as far as rain goes at about six o'clock, and then everything goes south. Uh, like Youngstown South. Got to get. So we should get Andrew DePaulo on the phone. See what see what he's got for us. Yeah, because because I'm looking at this radar and I'm like, wow, everything everything from the north disappears. Trumbull County up to the lake, it all disappears at like five forty five, six o'clock, and then everything else is south of Warren, and and it all comes like on an angle. Poor Columbiana County gets uh, gets the brunt of all of it. Uh, I, I don't mean, know that we're playing any games. Yeah, but we're not playing anything. Yeah, I mean, so it, let it fly, baby. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it's not going to touch, uh, if it's not going to touch Eastwood or or some of the other places, you know, I, I don't care. Now, Louisville, and and I'm looking at at um, Louisville's what south of Canton. All right, Louisville is going to get hammered for a good couple of hours, and then a little after six. It comes by them, and then that's it. So, do do you hang around? They don't have lights. Well, then 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 that answers the question. Um, of course, if it's clear, sun doesn't go down until about a little after eight. Now, can you play a game from six to eight o'clock? A high school game? Listen, I, I no. If I if I'm Salem, nope. I I would say no right because now. Because guess what? That means that Lane can't pitch tomorrow. Yeah. Because if he starts today, what, what is it? What's the magic number? 75, 70 pitches, something like that. He can't pitch for three days. I, I wouldn't even try it. I wouldn't even I wouldn't try start it. it. Yeah, I wouldn't even try it. Because if, if you try it and then something comes out of nowhere and you get destroyed and, oh, we're going to pick this game up tomorrow. Mm, no. No, give me, give me, just let me. Play now listen, tomorrow. Salem does have good relief pitching. They've got a good two in Gavin Wilms. They've got Carson Rhodes as well. But listen, this is the game of that Lane Rhodes is life. This yeah, is what I, he's wanted. I, 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 if I'm if I'm Coach DeBar or I'm Matt Freeman at, at Salem, and they're saying, well, we could start this game at six, I'm telling them pound salt. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't even want to do it. Uh, I, I would sit back and go, you know. Let's let's play the game when it's going to be somewhat reasonably nice. Tomorrow's going to be nice. Now, if they had lights, I'm all in. Well, because if they had lights, you're now you're. But like, how do you know? I mean, the sun sunset, and there's so many different kind of logics on when is it? When can you not see baseball? You know, when is it? Because. I, I I guarantee you that if Rhodes is around seventy pitches, that that um, the other side, the Chardon's going to say, "Well, we're having a tough time seeing the baseball." And oh, then, you can have some fun with that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, then look, it's umpire's discretion. Yeah, you you can have you can have some serious fun with that. Hell, I I've even told a pitcher, and we and I saw it done in the Florida State League. A pitcher can force the cancellation of a game anytime he wants to. 
uh, with when, when it's raining. It doesn't matter if it's raining lightly or if it's a torrential downpour. A pitcher can flat out say, I can't pitch on this mound. This this mound is this mound is too dangerous for me. The landing spot isn't right. Of course, you could be lying out your backside doing it. But I've seen a pitcher force a cancellation of a game in the Florida State League, where he said can't pitch on this mound. And the umpires look. They get the ground crew out, and the ground crew tries to uh, tries to do some stuff. And meanwhile, while it's while that's going on, the impending storm comes. Okay. Just a. I was gonna say. And and then that's it. Game over. Uh, if you you can buy some time doing that, and we did and, that this year, the, the, the one guy kept throwing balls. The umpire would throw him in baseball; he'd throw it in a dugout. Oh yeah, I, I like, I get it, I understand it, but especially if you're ahead, you see that a lot of times. Like, especially with this two-hour time limit we had it, last year. Oh, that sucked. I liked it. Oh, I, for games like one coach in particular that has a, a tendency of going three hours and thirty minutes with his games. I loved it, um, but somehow those games still ended up going to uh, you know two fifteen, yeah. two twenty, yeah. you know. So the the confusing part of last year was okay, is it two hours kill or two hours end of the inning? I still think that, and I saw this done in a tournament probably two years ago, and I thought it was fantastic. Two hours was the you couldn't start an inning after two hours. Two fifteen was it's dead. Dead at two fifteen. No matter what happens. No matter happens. what. No matter if you're in the middle of an inning. Yeah. Because you got a basically a fifteen minute warning. Yeah. And if you can't get it in, you're done. So this is this is where I would lose my mind if I was a manager. You're at two fourteen. You got the tying run on base, the winning run on base. Guy goes into the motion, throws the ball. 215 as my guy drills one up the alley to end the ball game, but the home plate umpire goes one of these numbers. Dead. You'd Both be that guy too. Field. I would go I would go postal on, you're, on anyone. You're that umpire that would, would Oh, I would. And I I would in a heartbeat. But just just because You're watching you're watching your watch. Oh, you're I, I would, like yeah, especially if I'm hungry. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I would And sit, when is that not? And, the and case. I would sit back and go, "Okay, uh that pitch might have been outside, but I'm calling it a strike because, well... Well, you, I, heard, I'm, I'm, I heard a story the other day, and you can, right here, you can tell me if it's true or false, that you said, hey, we're expanding the zones. I did. Absolutely did. The hell are you I, doing? I ab- absolutely did. Yeah, I absolutely did because I uh, because it, it, was, it was a really cold day, and, you know, we're, you're not here to, to, to draw walks. Hey. Start swinging a bat. You better learn I how to start swinging a bat. I heard that zone got pretty doggone big. It was. It wasn't outrageously big, but it was. It was. How was that? Know. How was that baseball justice though? Like, like if it, listen, if it's cold, I, you know, you swing the bats. You're not here to draw a walk. You're here to swing a bat. Come on. I'm a, I'm, a I'm walk's not, a base hit. Yeah, but I'm not talking about a pitch this far off. The I heard plate. it was no, big. It, it, it wasn't that big. You said ridiculously big. I didn't. I didn't say that big. Ridiculously big is this. I'm you talking about were, this. Shush. I'm talking about this. I've seen your zone to start. So if you expanded your zone, it is big. It, it is a big boy zone. It's it's not horribly big. I'm I, not, can I, I didn't call anything outrageously off. For, if a right hander's up and a pitch is outside to the point where it's halfway across the batter's box, I'm not calling that is a it, strike. Is it chalk? If it's chalk, you oh yeah. Chalk? If 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 it's chalk, you it, call batter's box chalk a strike. Not not outer inner. No, no. inner. Yeah, that's still bad. Uh, it's not that bad. That's still bad. Well, it's a couple inches off the plate. And I heard I heard it was north and south too. I heard it was pretty nah, big. The north wasn't bad. South might have been. If we're if we're <laughs> south south might have been. If, if we're playing MLB the show, I heard it was. Chin. No, no, no. I heard no, no, it was no. chin to shin. No, 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 no. Mine, mine was up here, where the where the where the uniform, that's a uniform anyway. stuff is, and okay, con- it I, wasn't the shin. I heard chin, but to it shins. was it was a little a little below the little below the knee. I heard chin to shins, and you couldn't hit the baseball with a pull drag. And yet there were twenty runs scored that game. So. You know, I mean, go figure. I'm just saying, like, 
at all. I know, I know what you were trying to do, but I'm sitting there like, but it was a JV game, so I actually gave the other. Yeah, game. exactly. Said, it was JV game. You got to teach kids how you're to not, swing. You're not playing for a state title. I'm certainly not going to do that on a varsity game. You get that, murdered. I'd, I'd get murdered in my sleep, and justifiably so. No way in hell you'd do that in a varsity. I just game. don't know that you ever come out like. That takes stones to even come out and be like, boys, we're, we're making the zone bigger. I would have been like, you're going to do what now? I did, yeah, you know, we're making the zone bigger. Go swing the bats. Um, I would have, I would have told chilly. my... It's, I, it's cold, and we shouldn't be I would have told my here. athletic director to cut your pay in half. <laughs> Dude cold. doesn't want to be here, cut it in half. It's cold, and we need to swing the bats. My so gosh. there you go. It's, uh, you're you're, you're going to swing bats. So right. and, and they did, and, and they still scored a lot of runs. It was... It, because they knew the, they had to swing because you got the game going Santa here. Claus of the strike zone back there. Get the game going here. I I did the um I did the plate for Cheney and East, and the the varsity game. So there was no you know nothing yeah. you know it wound up good. Um, I, I heard horror stories about how. Uh, the the last time those two teams played was up at Eastwood, and it was like a runs or something four hour game. Yep. Well, we were in and out in about two and change. It, it was uh, and it was a well played game by both teams. I, I was excited. I, I was, uh, you know, it was it was fun. I've 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 heard so many stories about your umpiring, and, and I, I crack up every time I, I hear. A story. Oh, it's it, I I will be the first to admit home plate is a really difficult. You don't like home plate. I don't. I, I it's not that I don't like it. Once you get nailed with a ball. It, it makes life a little bit more You're skittish. It, it does. It, it it makes life a little more skittish. And I think two years ago when I got a concussion, I was like, okay, it's all right. It, it, we, I got to learn because you got the you got the armor on. Yeah. And, and reality is, and, and, and you can think this, but your actions tell a different story. Reality is, when you have the chest protector on, I've been drilled with the ball in the chest with the chest protector. Hurts, You're but soft. but it's but it's not that big of a deal. No. It it's you know I mean no big deal. I've been banged with the with the shin guards again. Yep. Not that big of a deal. I've been yep. hit with the with a ball on the shoe. Not that big of a deal because the shoes are steel toed. Yeah. So you know, but when you get a ball, what ha- what do you have? A, do you have a when, hockey mask or do you have a, a like regular? Old... No, it's regular regular umpire. You need to get a hockey mask. Uh, well, I don't know if they I don't know if the, the umpires I don't know if they have them, uh, but. but the when you get a ball off of the shoulder, okay, you have my attention now. That that one hurts. Hang on, I'm getting a call. I gotta take this. All right, and then and then you get a ball off of the uh, arm or uh, bare uh, bare skin. Yeah, that hurts. That definitely hurts. But it, it, look, at the end of the day, it, it's it's more of a mind thing. You gotta you gotta have the equipment to where you're you're standing and and you're you just taking the uh taking the punishment and uh it's it's tough to do it's a lot harder than 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 i thought it would be uh it, it's definitely a lot harder than i thought it would be the bases uh that's you know just getting into position and everything that's that's fun that's not to say that home plate umpiring isn't fun it is uh but it, it's just it's a different animal though especially uh if you have never gone behind home plate uh, and and when a kid is dealing, uh, that's it can be it can be a little treacherous. It can be treacherous, especially if the catcher isn't exactly um, doing his job behind the plate. It can be a little tough, uh, but but it's fun. I, I, I and I will say this, and we're going to have John Mang on next week. Uh, he is the um, the man in charge of the Mahoning Valley Umpires Association as well as the officials. Truth be told, and, and this is something that that certainly needs to be discussed, we have a serious shortage of officials uh, in the Mahoning Valley in all sports. We have a serious, serious shortage uh, of football officials, basketball referees, uh, baseball umpires. We have a shortage of volleyball officials, uh, track and field officials. There is a shortage of officials uh, in the Mahoning Valley, and it's to the point where it's going to start affecting games, uh, which is the damn shame of it all. Uh, we sit back and we, you know, we love athletics and we love the 
the high school sports scene, uh, which is one of the reasons, a big reason why YSN is is in business. Uh, but we all have to remember, without the officials, without the referees and the umpires, going to have a hard time putting together a game. Uh, and we have a serious shortage of officials uh, throughout the Mahoning Valley. And uh, we'll have John Mang on next week to talk about that because that's an issue that uh, is hopefully going to be able to be resolved. But uh, I can see where that issue could be a, a real horrible time uh, for a lot of folks in the Mahoning Valley when it comes to high school sports. Uh, if you have an official shortage, that can make life really, really difficult. All right, we'll take a time out, be back with more. It is a Wednesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Rain will come and go tomorrow. There'll be some dry intervals. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset this evening. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Sixty years ago, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods began with three siblings, a handset sawmill, and a few local orders. And while business has certainly changed over the years, what has not are our principles of hard work, craftsmanship, and commitment to quality. At Baird Brothers, we're proud to put our name on the products we create, from moldings and doors to flooring and lumber. Thank you for 60 great years. We look forward to 60 more. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Tri-State Ford announces our 96-hour Memorial Day sales event. Four days of huge savings on every vehicle. Get top dollar for your trade or sell us yours. Attention, currently sees of all makes and models. Turn in your lease early and get up to $2,500 trade equity. Plus, our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Don't miss this event. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit tristateford.net. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. 
With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. All right, so we have uh, cancellations all over the place. Uh, your regional softball tournament, uh, D3, will be played tomorrow. Uh, Ursuline will play Sheffield Brookside at 2 o'clock. South Range will play Maslin Tusla at 5 o'clock. Uh, so those games will be played tomorrow. Uh, your Division Two and Division Three district championship games uh, at Scene Park have been postponed. Canfield uh, will play Canton South at 6 o'clock tomorrow on Field 2. Cardinal Mooney will play Burton Berkshire uh, for the Division Three district championship at 6 o'clock tomorrow on Field 3. And the D4 uh, District Championship will be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at Scene Park on Field 4. Uh, that, or I'm sorry, Field uh, 1, Field 4, uh, Division 4, Field 1, Warren JFK taking on Heartland Christian. That will be at 6 o'clock. Still waiting word on whether the game is going to be played in Louisville uh, between Salem and Chardon, I would think that that game gets postponed. Yes, I understand that Chardon or that uh, Louisville, excuse me, uh, has turf. I would think that game gets postponed, uh, but nothing is official as of yet. Uh, the D three uh, district championship up at Niles has already been postponed. Uh, Rootstown and South Range that'll be played tomorrow uh, at the exact same time. Uh, at the exact same place. Uh, Wilder Field in Niles tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Uh, West Branch, uh, the D2 regional semifinals at Firestone Stadium. That game is going to be played, but it will not be played at 5 o'clock. Uh, West Branch's game against Richfield Revere has been moved to 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, so West Branch will play Richfield Revere under the lights at Firestone Stadium in Akron. That is an 8 o'clock start. Uh, the winner of that game will take on the winner of Wooster Triway and Marlington. Uh, who knows when that game is going to be played. I I guess I would assume that uh, the Wooster Triway marlington game will get moved back as well. Uh, I do know that the weather around here is to stop at about 6 o'clock. Well, Akron is to the west of us, so you can pretty much assume that the weather over there uh, would stop well before 6 o'clock. So there's the possibility, and, and I don't know this to be true, but I would be willing to bet uh, some Skittles uh, that the Marlington Wooster Triway game will be played around six o'clock, and then the West Branch Richfield Revere game would be scheduled for eight o'clock tonight. Uh, that that wouldn't surprise me. And then you get both games in, uh, and then Saturday afternoon at one o'clock you have your regional championship game, and hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, it's the third meeting between West Branch and Marlington. Uh, a couple of teams in the EBC uh, hoping to get themselves into a regional championship game. And again, all eyes tomorrow uh, at Youngstown State University. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, Ursland taking on Sheffield Brookside. Uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, South Range playing Maslin Tusla. Obviously, this area would love to see Ursland and South Range play each other for a regional championship. That game would be Saturday at high noon at uh, YSU. 
over at uh, Farmers National Bank Field. For those wondering where that uh, softball facility is, if you're on Fifth Avenue, it's across the street from Stambaugh, uh, the Ice Castle, and it's behind the McDonald's restaurant. It's behind the McDonald's restaurant uh, on Fifth Avenue, across the street from the uh, from the tailgating lot, the main tailgating lot, caddy corner from the main tailgating lot, and across the street from uh, Stambaugh Stadium, a little further down Fifth Avenue uh, from uh, from Stambaugh, and directly across the street or caddy corner uh, from the main tailgating lot where all of the uh, all of the football uh, tailgaters park. Uh, which will be hopping this fall uh, when we get the uh, YSU football season going. That that man, I can't wait for that. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Did want to make mention uh, track and field uh, that is going to be happening tomorrow uh, at Fitch. The Division Two Regionals. Uh, the first day will be field events at four thirty. And the running events at 5:30, and then on Friday, uh, your Division One regionals at Austin Town Fitch. Your uh, field events will take place at 4:30, and your running events will take place at uh, 5:30. Uh, that is your uh, Division One. Uh, regional uh, at Fitch on Thursday, uh, and then Division One regional uh, uh, final day on Friday. Uh, on Friday at Maslin Perry, it is the Division Three regional, uh, your final day of events, uh, because today is supposed to be the first day uh, of events. Kind of wondering if that's going to happen. Uh, you got to believe the uh, track and field events uh, for today, uh, Division One and Division Three, Division One at Fitch, uh, Division Three at Maslin Perry. Kind of wondering if you're going to have uh, track and field today. Uh, what with the rain coming in, I don't know if you're going to be able to get that uh, together. I just don't know if you're going to be able to get that one together. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So far, uh, nothing has been uh, nothing has been decided. At least to our knowledge, nothing has been decided uh, today. The D one regional at Fitch field events starting at four thirty. The running events at five thirty. Uh, the D three regional at Mashlin Perry today. Uh, the field events starting at four thirty. The running events starting at six o'clock. Uh, and then Friday D two. Uh, regionals at Fitch, field events at 4.30, running events at 5.30. Uh, uh, Friday, D1 regional, D3 regional, uh, the final day, field events at 4.30, running events at 5.30. Uh, at Maslin Perry, D3, final day, field events at 4.30, running events at 6 o'clock. And then on Saturday, uh, you have your D2 regionals, at Fitch, your final day, field events at 11 a.m., running events at 12. Uh, so no word yet on whether the D1, D2, or D3 regionals uh, are going to be uh, uh, done, or at least t- today, D1 and D3 regionals from Austin Town Fitch and Maslin Perry. No word yet on whether the track and field uh, regional tournaments have been postponed uh, but the Division Three softball regionals have been postponed. Uh, the Division Three district championship at Scene Park, as well as Niles, both of those games have been postponed. The D2 district championship game at Scene Park has been canceled. Uh, still waiting word on the D2 championship game at uh, Louisville between Salem and Chardon. And looking at the map, uh, the rain is supposed to be hitting Louisville pretty quickly and continuing for a good solid hour to 90 minutes. Can't imagine that they would be playing today, but you know, who knows? Who knows what happens? All right, we'll take a final timeout and be back to wrap this one up. Stick around. It's a 
Wednesday edition of Running Points on YSNlive.com. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. By giving you confidence in your vehicle with the Greenwood Advantage warranty. By guaranteeing you financing. Regardless of your situation or credit history and by being with you for every mile of your journey. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we do whatever it takes to go the extra mile. So, how can we go the extra mile for you? Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. If you're looking for a new Ford vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of new Ford models. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your new Ford. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their new Ford at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Uh, we are getting set to make way for 
uh, power hour as they will take you through the three o'clock hour. And again, uh, most, if not, uh, well, we I can't say all of the games have been postponed, but most of them have been uh, postponed. The D2 and D3 district championship games at Scene Park have been postponed. The D3 district championship game up at Niles has been postponed. Uh, the Division Three. Uh, regional semifinals uh, in softball have been postponed. West Branch will be playing at 8 o'clock tonight uh, instead of 5 o'clock against Richfield Revere in the D2 regional semifinals from Firestone Stadium in Akron. One game that will not be postponed tonight, I can tell you that. I can promise you that. That'll be the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. Opening night tonight, uh, the home opener, uh, if you will. The Scrappers are already 2-0. and They played two games in West Virginia Monday and Tuesday, won both games 8-1 to and 7-1 to as the Scrappers open up the home portion of the 2021 inaugural Major League Baseball Draft League. Scrappers will go to Eastwood Field and play at Eastwood Field for the first time in six months. 132 days. The last time the Scrappers played at Eastwood Field, go back to September 2nd, 2019. Final game of the 2019 regular season, the Scrappers beat West Virginia 2 to nothing. 2020 was taken away due to COVID. Uh, the New York Penn League was taken away, but the Scrappers return as a member of the inaugural Major League Baseball Draft League. Hope to see you out at Eastwood tonight. And for those of you uh, wanting to hear the game, if you're not going to the game, or even if you are going to the game and you have a smartphone with you, you can go to ysnlive.com slash scrappers, and you'll be able to hear the play-by-play with yours truly. Make it a great afternoon and evening, everyone. We'll see you at the ballpark, and we'll be back tomorrow, noon to 3, for a Thursday edition of Running Point on Y.